All right. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah, welcome to the second to last run of this marathon. And this is going to be, my name is Hurit, and I have Jay Tattles with me. Hello. And this is going to be Brilliant Diamond Elite 4 Round 3. Uh, just FYI, I basically have to tech this run myself at the moment. So it may be a little scuffed at the beginning. Uh, I apologize, but hopefully everything looks good uh, and sounds good. Uh, yeah, we're just going to get started. Uh, it should be this one. We set a specific time um, on the switch. We'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, yeah, thank I'm you for so the good luck. Already. And this is going to be silly. Hold on. How do I do this? Um, there's not enough hands for this. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I have a fantastic idea, I think. Actually, no. Okay, whatever. Um, we're going to start in three, two, one. Okay. Go. Let's go. I wanted to start like live split at the same time as I click the button. And I also wanted to start the stream timer. <laughs> but it just it's not it's not gonna work very <laughs> well like not that. Enough hands. <laughs> yeah. Is that the equivalent of girl one from Let's Go? Um not really, because Girl 1 in Let's Go is technically not as fast. It's sm it's slower, right? Anything that isn't Boy 1 is technically slower in Let's Go. In this game, it's actually it actually matters. Um, or rather, we think it matters. I don't think anyone actually checked for this. But basically, in the original game, so this is a remake of Diamond and Pearl. Uh, let me just do my options. Uh, we will keep the other save. And I know this is what's first that I'm doing music off, but hold on, I'm gonna have music in a sec. Hopefully. This game is cursed. This game is cursed. How do I do this? Hold on. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't work, <laughs> then we'll figure it out. We'll do music on if needed. Okay, hopefully everyone can hear the music. Um... I lost my connection to chat, that's fine. As long as this trim is still up. But yeah, this is a remake of Diamond and Pearl. Um... And... In the original game, it's actually faster to use the girl, because... If you are... if you're done, um... Lucas, which is the, the male counterpart, uh, will be the professor assistant, and Lucas talks a little less than Don. So you pick her so that you have a less chatty uh, professor's aide, basically. Such an interesting... Th there's so much about this game that I just like never learned when I was running it. Yeah. So again, I don't know if, if anyone actually checked this. Um, we just assume since this game is like a very faithful remake um, to the original, I think we just assumed that it is faster to use the to use Don. But yeah, yeah. So this is Elite Four Round Three. It's one of the longest categories in this run or in this game. Um, as you may know, a lot of Pokemon games. Uh, have multiple iterations of the Elite Four. And usually they only have two. This game has three, uh, which is pretty nice. And we are gonna pick Chimchar here. We're gonna be using Chimchar for quite a while. Uh, I would say roughly the first hour of the run, and then we'll use it occasionally as well. Um, 
a pretty good mod for like the beginning of the game. But yeah, a lot of games have what you would call loot for round two. This one has round two and has round three. Um, the reason there are multiple iterations is because they are different. So the Pokemon they have on each of the iterations is different. And their levels, their IVs, their items, abilities, all that sort of thing uh, are going to be different between the iterations. So much so that the last Pokemon um, in the run is a level 88 Garchomp. Oh my god. <laughs> so that's quite. I quite thought the Wake was up. bad. Is this a. Do you know when they started, like, what generation they started doing iterations of the E4? Actually, don't don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think there was a round three on the original Diamond Pearls either. I used to, I think there in was Gen 3, only when I was a kid, I used to just spam the E4 once I finished the game, and I don't think they changed it in Gen 3. Right. But then after Gen 3, I'm basically useless, so... I have no idea. <laughs> Alright, so we didn't actually explain the music. Um... I'm hoping people can hear the music uh, on stream. They said they could earlier. Okay, cool. I didn't actually... Hold on. That was dumb. Um, we didn't actually explain the music thing. Uh, so this game is actually faster to run without music. Which is incredibly cursed. Um, the reason it's faster is because... Um, that's actually like a prime example of that. Um, a lot of the jingles that you get as you play the game, stuff like picking up items, leveling up, stuff like that, um, basically gets skipped, if that makes sense. Uh, so rather than muted, which means that for a lot of the things, a lot of like if you pick up an item in this game, you basically can move right away instead of having to wait for the jingle to play. Even so, if you are doing music off, this is gonna like save a bunch of time over the course of the run. It's especially noticeable for the... What's it called? The... The gym badges. So when you finish a gym fight or a gym leader fight, you get a bunch of... Like, you get a, a TM, you get the badge, you get, I think, some stickers, stuff like that. Um, and on a single uh, gym leader, you would be saving like 11 seconds or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, over the course of the entire run, uh, we're, we're not exactly sure how much it saves, but we believe it's probably within like 8 to 10 minutes. This would be for any percent, or any percent glitches that is. Um, for Elite for Round 3, it's probably even higher because it's a longer run, there's more stuff to do. This run is on the newest patch, yes. Uh, this is... It's not in the category name, but it is a glitchless plan as well. As you may know, this game is incredibly broken. Or was incredibly broken. It is still somewhat broken. But... It kind of works, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is a glitchless run. wild how much time like i did the this intro once with music and it's like just wild how much time it saves like getting out of that guidebook when that when that pops up takes so much longer with the music on yeah and it's like almost instant without the music yeah it is pretty cool so the the obvious problem is that once you are uh playing with music off it's just gonna be a lot a lot more dull unless you, you play uh, music so for the longest time what people would do is they would just run random music. Um, some people still do. Um, but then I created a tool basically that creates, that, that just plays the music, um, depending on where you are in the game, which is what we are using here, which is why the music is still more or less accurate. You'll notice there's like a slight delay on some things. 
it may not fit perfectly, um, but for the most part it kind of works. Nice, uh, no encounters on the way to this cutscene. Yeah, but I did have two encounters before Sandham on the first pass, so... <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll just ignore those. We'll, we'll just ignore happen. those, yeah. <laughs> um, this is actually a cutscene and you can't... Mashing does nothing, uh, you just have to wait for it to be over. Yeah. We can't really skip the, the catch tutorial in this game. I always forget too. I always every time I play this, I try to I just like you try to do something. Forget and just mash. I just mash through it, just like not even thinking about it, and then realize I'm just not even oh. doing anything. I thought you were trying to like use Turtwig or something. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> just like not even paying attention, just mashing like it's gonna yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. faster, but it does not. It's just very slow. Yeah, we're about to enter the first fight of the run. Um, I will save, <laughs> which is <laughs> good call. <laughs> which tells you quite a lot about how this run could go. Um, yeah, this is one of the most brutal routes, I would say. Um, it's not as brutal in Elite for round three, I would say, because you're gonna do a bunch of extra fights and. You're just gonna end up having. I should have leered first, but that's okay. That's a great, okay. Interesting. Uh, oh no. That doesn't look good. This could be minus attack, maybe. This is probably minus attack. The stats shouldn't matter too much. Which is why I basically run any, any Chimchar. You're, you're only really using Chimchar for the first um, hour, basically. Dude, why am I getting crit? Another hard? crit, bruh. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Star this is actually pretty good. Work right now. So we're gonna be able to have blades soon. I think I saw a 10 on attack. It's not good. <laughs> I didn't actually check my nature because, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's like it's nice to know a few stats every now and then, um, but it's not gonna matter too much. Usually, it means like if you have bad stats, either bad attack, like you want good attack and good special attack. Yeah, you basically best case scenario one attack to be like eleven or higher uh, at level five. So for it to be 10 at level 6 is not great. That is crazy. Okay, this is this has to be minus special actually, not minus attack. <laughs> minus Did special you see the first good. roll? I've never seen a first roll on Bidoof take... Uh, that's crazy. I've never seen a first roll on Bidoof take so... So little. Like Would, less than half. Wouldn't be a marathon run without... That's crazy. Without bad things happening. It's okay. All the all the like not great stuff is gonna happen right now, so that everything later will be totally fine. Yes, I believe. Okay, we are manipulating manipulating Blaze here again. Hopefully, get a two shot here. I will have to heal. I probably played that a little too risky, but that's for a marathon, that is. But yeah. Um, Blaze's Shimchar's ability basically makes our fire moves more powerful if we are under a third of our, H or of our HP. So you kind of want to manipulate that a lot of the times. Yeah, this aim is like really brutal. Uh, a lot of the fights are fights that you can die to, unfortunately, especially later uh, when we... No, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Especially later um, when we are using other pokes. The movement is also terrible in this game. 
Yeah, movement is nasty, it's especially on the bike. I always kind of thought like the when I when I was running. So I, I for anybody that doesn't know, which is probably everybody, I ran this game a handful of times, and my most recent finished run was like a year and a half ago. So I don't remember hardly anything. But I always thought that like um, you don't have to reset as much for natures in this run, which is kind of nice as other runs. But the trade-off for that is kind of that the first like 30 minutes is just horrible. Can be just horrible. Yeah, I would say the um, first hour and a half. Basically until you get to wake, which is the third. Until you get to wake, yeah. It's until, just, it's it's just, just rough. rough. The After that, you actually get to play the game. Which is fun. Um, but yeah. Just like so many things that can go wrong. Nothing, not too many things that are really run killing, but just yeah. a lot of just time wasting stuff can happen. All right, first rival fight. Uh, this fight's gonna go. It's gonna look extremely silly because so Barry here has two Pokemon, Starly and the Piplup, because we chose Chimchar. And believe it or not, the best best option we have to fight the Piplup is to just use Ember, which goes against everything um, you're taught to do. You do not know your time matchups. Yep. We do not talk. Hawk would be very disappointed here. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, the problem is uh, you have Tackle, which you could use. Unfortunately, they basically just spam Growl usually. Um, which means you immediately like start getting really bad Growls. And at that point, you might as well just do Ember. And just keep spamming Ember. What you're hoping for is to get into Blaze. Um, and then burn... The Piplup, okay, burning the Piplup here is not great, but it's fine. Um, mixed is slightly less ris risky as well. Um, I do want Piplup to use Pound here so that I am put into place. Unfortunately, since it is burnt now, it's gonna take a little longer to put me into place because it's gonna do half the damage it would normally do. Uh, so, yeah, this fight. It looks extremely silly, but there's really no faster way that we could come up um, with to get through it. Okay. Now we're in Blaze, so we should be doing more damage. Every time I get to this fight, I'm just like, I always feel like I'm going to be way behind uh, what my PB time was, and then... I end up being like on par with it or better because this fight, every time this fight is just so slow. <laughs> yeah. It just sucks. Um... Alright, so if you've ever, pe if you've ever seen a 90% glitchless run, you would know that actually here we would go around this thing and keep going to Ouroboros oh. City. In this category, we actually fight this optional. A... And the reason for this is that we didn't actually explain it, um, but in, there are like a couple of requirements that you must meet in order to do the Elite 4 Round 2 and Elite 4 Round 3. Uh, we sadly weren't in place here because we got a level up. If we were in place, this would have been a one-shot. That's fine though. Um, so usually you would want to... I mean, an early burn saves multiple turns, but you would still like to get it a little later, I would say. Uh, just to get... Basically, you would like to get the burn when you are... Um, when you are in Blitz. Because then you can just blitz through the battle. If you get it too early... I guess it saves time, but it's not gonna be nearly as much. But yeah, How there often are... do you switch between... Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I was going to talk about... I was just going to ask how often you switch between the D-pad and the and the joystick for movement. Uh, I always use the joystick. Oh, actually, I should be doing oh, okay. this. Marathon safe. All right. Uh, so usually we always do a center here uh, for PP management. And you might as well... Um, Heal your Pokemon here as well. Um, but usually you would do it on the way down because we actually have to go up here and catch Machop 
uh, because Chimchar can't really deal with. Um, okay, first perfect. Try of first try Machop is really good. Hopefully, it's not level five. <laughs> of course. At least so you it's have level one. five. Level five is a little unfortunate, but it, it'll work. It's fine. Better than getting like ten Geo dudes and then. Yeah. And then finally a Machop. This game can be brutal uh, with encounters. Um, not only this once, like you can get a, a Geodude here. Um, and have to wait forever to get him a chop. But in addition to that, you could have. Um, you could have a bunch of extra encounters early on because this game is very brutal with them. Um, there's not really much of like immunity uh, when it comes to encounters in this game. So you can just get, and they are very like. There's a lot of variance uh, when it comes to encounters. You can get like no encounters up to work. You can get like 15. Um, it's very inconsistent. You're getting a lot of uh, a lot of items that you don't get at any percent as yes, well. Yes, I am. Um, I actually wanted to explain. So, for Elite Four Round Two and Elite Four Round Three, there's a couple of extra requirements that you must do in order to fight them. So, for each of the iterations, you need to beat the previous iteration, obviously. Um, so I'm gonna do this. This is slightly different than any percent as well, but I'll explain it in a second. Um, so for round two, you would have to beat round one, and for round three, you would have to beat round two. But in addition to that, in order to unlock round two, you need to see every Pokémon in the Sino Dex. Uh, that's 150. Uh, and that's actually the main reason why this run is pretty interesting. Um, in the normal any percent glitchless run, you wouldn't be seeing all the Pokémon. So in this one, we'll be basically doing extra fight, um, and we're gonna do a few things, like a few detours, a few extra things, to make sure that we get the 150, so we can do round two. And then for round three, we have to defeat each run, which basically means we have to do a portion of the um, of the post game. Which is also pretty nice. I don't think I've ever seen the post game in this. It is pretty cool. I actually really like the post game in in this in this game. Okay. We are getting like pretty bullied, especially because Shinchar also sucks uh, in this run, but. That's okay. okay. This is very good though. We got three crits here. Uh, we use Machop to handle the gym because Shimchar can't really handle it. Uh, getting a level 6 or level 7 Machop is slightly better because, yeah, they just have better stats. Um, but it is still like totally fine to take a 5. Uh, in any percent, um, with a level 5 Machop or a level 6 Machop, you would actually have to do a few extra switch shenanigans. Um, because you need your Shimchar to be evolved by the time you reach Mars 1. Um, I'm not gonna heal you. I'll heal in the battle. I would rather do that. This route is a little tight with potions, so I don't, I don't want to, like, waste them right away. Um, so I would rather just use one in the battle. Um, but yeah, you want Chimchar to be evolved by the time you reach Mars, and since you get different amounts of experience from the Machop catch, depending on the level, um, you will... That's a crit, okay. I was super confused there. Crit without anything else. Okay, that's unfortunate, but honestly pretty standard at this point. Okay, rollout is nice. Now we revenge. Yeah, we do need to heal here. That still doesn't kill? Okay, whatever. Fine. That's crazy that it didn't kill there. But alright. Okay. 
So we're gonna heal here. That's perfect. Uh, low kick. So for Onyx, we actually have to use low kick rather than revenge because Onyx is a very heavy Pokemon. Uh, it's gonna heal here. But I think we should be able to kill on the next turn. Maybe? There's so many pokes in this game that have sturdy. Yep. This is definitely not that spell. I forgot about that. Alright, and now actually comes the worst part of this fight. Which is the Granidos. Um, the Granidos has Headbutt, so it can flinch. Um, you don't want it to flinch. You just want to hit the Revenge. Be good now. Nice. Let's go. Sometimes you just get glinch into oblivion here, which sucks. Yeah, that's work. Not too bad. Um, and yeah, we're gonna do our first shop off the run. And we're soon gonna be getting rid of the Machop. And trading it for an Abra, an in-game traded Abra, um, which is extremely busted and very useful in this run. Okay. What is the experience rounding for Abra still as tight as, uh, as yes, in the it is. other run? Yes, pretty much the same thing. Uh, oh, wait, okay. what am I doing? Uh, okay. Uh, Weird. I haven't played too much, let's go. <laughs> or rather, I haven't yeah, the, really the... played this game all that much, so I'm not used to the input yeah, on this coming, controller coming anymore. Yeah, coming this from Let's Go is just like, the, the Mart menus are so wildly different. Yep. Alright, so we're gonna get rid of a chop, we get an Abra here. Uh, we can't really use it yet. Um, this game is very tough with obedience. Um, so basically after you defeat the second gym, Pokemon up to level 30 uh, will obey you. And that's when we'll start using, at that point, the Kadabra. Uh, but we do have, like, this game has built-in extra, um, which means our Abra is going to still like be gaining levels um, as we go through the game with Chimchar for now. And then we're basically going to switch to Kadabra. Um, unfortunately, it also gets... I mean, it's, it's basically a... It's a problem, but it's also like a benefit. It's gonna get a lot of experience because it's an in-game traded Pokemon, but it um, it could lead to basically um, I forgot to do this. Okay. Um, it could lead to, to some problems because it can hit level thirty before we defeat Wake, which is the fourth gym leader. Um, or you can hit like level 31 before that, and that's when the obedience cap is increased again. So we have to basically do very tight um, experience routing for this entire thing. So we're going to be switching between uh, Chimchar, or I guess Monferno at that point, and Kadabra. For a few fights, we're going to actually have Kadabra dead at some point, um, just to make sure that we get to exactly, because we need to be level 30 to beat Wake, um, but we can't be 31, otherwise we risk disobeying. Yeah, everything pretty much from here until Wake is just like routed around, entirely routed around keeping, uh, getting Kadabra to the right levels. Yeah. Keeping it under 30. Alright, gonna teach Power Punch, pretty good move. Okay, good avoid. I don't think I've ever been confused by that Zubat here. It's kind of crazy. Alright. First spinner in the run. Um. Oh, and the experience routing for Abra is so tight that if you hit, like, even one optional, it could just completely throw it off. Yeah. And the right word is actually could. Because this game has scaled experience, could, sometimes yeah. it could actually be fine. It's usually not going to be fine. But it's actually funny that you should mention it, because I'm actually going to fight an optional here uh, in a sec. 
with Abra, and it's actually not going to matter in the end. I'm going to be at the same um, experience when I get to wake, even though I'm doing one extra fight. Right, two or three optionals though. It's basically, it's basically over. <laughs> yeah, but one is. One I mean, is one one is usually okay. also over. It's just like it just yep. works very well for this specific um, trainer. Yeah, gonna pick a bunch of extra items. Um, this game is like this run. We're gonna need a lot of items. We're gonna need a lot of X items, a lot of potions, and all that sort of things. Uh, so I'm basically gonna be picking up a bunch of extra. Um, extra items either to use, like this antidote here, uh, but also to sell. Um, so this is the trainer that I was talking about. It's actually unfortunate because this is one of the oh. coolest trainers. Oh, auto music doesn't support this fight. That's interesting. I forgot about that. That's okay. Uh, I can fix it. It's interesting that you fight this one. Yeah. Uh, we fight this one because we get special attack AVs here. Um, Which basically increases uh, a range, or makes uh, the Gyarados on Wake a 15 and 16 range, rather than, I think, a 12 and 16? Or something like that. Normally on any percent you wouldn't do this, you would buy an extra Calcium. Unfortunately we don't really have money for it, um, because we need to buy a bunch of other things. So I'm just doing the Exo Trainer, basically. It also gets a bit more EXP, which helps with some of the fights here, um, potentially. That's another thing about this game is the the EVs are just like routed a little bit tightly as well. Like uh, there was when I was running this game before, there was like one fight that I didn't win with the correct Pokemon. Like, oh, I remember that. Literally that was just one so Pokemon. Bad. I didn't win with the correct Pokemon, and it turned something like three hours later into a range. And it was a fifteen and sixteen, and you missed it. Yeah, it was a fifteen and sixteen, and I missed it. The one that's actually... It was literally just like one Pokemon. I think it maybe it was Kadabra or something that just like didn't kill it. Um, um, it yeah, it was like, like the Rosalia speed. didn't kill the Rosalia. Yeah. Um, with Kadabra and then yeah, it missed. And then it basically had a 15 and 16 on the Onchkro later. That's yeah. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> this game is a great game. Yeah, Chimchar is very good for all of these fights, uh, or for most of them. Um, the fire type is just very good. Too. I feel like there's so many grass types, grass and bug types, like, up through Cardinia's uh, gym. Yeah. here and then we go to Valley Windworks which is where we'll fight Mars 1. Uh, we do want Monferno basically before Mars 1 so we actually fight another optional just before Mars. Uh, I'm gonna taunt this because you're annoying. Okay Min look would have been fine. Basically all these Zubats have Supersonic usually. Punish is fine. Um, I can steal two shot, I think. Yeah. They all have supersonic. Um, this trainers specifically have random AI, so they they will pick a move at random. Some trainers will have smart AI, and so on a trainer like this, you could uh, just skip taunt if you want to. I usually don't because I don't know. I feel like I get punished more often than not. Um. And it's not like you're gonna die because you get confused, it's just annoying. Um, but some trainers have smart AI. Uh, specifically, for example, Mars will always um, be going for Supersonic on turn 1. Just to do that. This grunt has a glam yell with fake out. It doesn't always go for fake out. It is. 
My defense looks Classic. decent, actually. I have really weird stats. It's kind of interesting that in Let's Go it's a Meowth 30 minutes into the run that has Fake Out and then in BDSP it's a Glam Meowth 30 minutes in that has Fake Out. It's really weird that this is a 3-shot. I don't think I've ever 3-shot this thing. I have like... I think like... Both my attack and special attack are both like really bad. That's my takeaway from this. Uh, but my defense yeah, looks really good. Yeah, this not great. That's fine, though. Once we get Kadabra, we'll... We'll be fine. The cool thing about Kadabra is that it has fixed stats. So this is the optional that I was talking about. This is the one that's gonna get us to 14. Um... You fight this guy in the... in the regular percent. Yes, well. we do. The, I, I guess you probably know what's the there's like a you have to fight certain trainers for a run to be valid isn't that is is that the thing with this game uh what do you mean you have to fight all like, the required trainers yes all the required trainers but this but you just said this guy's an optional so this is an optional yes this required. is an optional just to get the monferno before mars the scyther rock for oh, example okay. doesn't fight this I don't think it does, as far as I remember. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. And you don't actually use a Scyther for... Like here, you use good luck, but yeah. Alright. I'm gonna save. Mars is annoying. Mars is actually a really mean... trainer to have here, uh, because of the Perugly. Perugly is just... too strong of a Pokémon to be facing this early in the game. It kind of sucks. Yeah, um, so Mars is going to lead the Zubat, which we're going to taunt and then Ember Spam, but sometimes um, use U-Turn and switch to Perugly, which is annoying. Uh, so ideally, we just want to take it out here. Yeah. Like I said, Smart AI, so it's going to try and go for the Super Sonic. Okay, burn. Interesting. Burn could help getting this three shot. I believe this is actually technically a range if you have bad special, so. Uh, like a three shot range, that is. Is it typically a three shot with good stats? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, it's never a two shot, so it's usually a three shot. Um, I think it can be a four if you if you have like really bad stats, as far as I remember. Yeah, shrink off the taunt, but it doesn't matter anymore. I should be killing it here. Uh, this is good, no shenanigans. Yeah, now we get we have the Perugly. The Perugly is very likely to use Fake Out. It is not absolutely guaranteed. I have seen it use Tackle Turn 1, which is very weird. I think I've seen it once. Yeah, it goes for Fake Out. So usually what we do is just... We take the opportunity to... I have really good defense. That's like crazy. <laughs> this is a weird, a weird Chimchar. It is going to heal here, unfortunately. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep far up punching. Uh, we want to exit this fight in Blaze, and that's not ideal. That's okay. Okay, I wasn't really expecting that to kill actually. Yeah, the Blaze. Yeah, I think the Blaze awesome. is just for one fight coming up. It turns it turns a two shot into a one shot. But yeah, exactly. Um, it's not the worst thing not to have it, but it is definitely faster to have yeah, it. It means I have to heal now, which is also unfortunate, because the beauty fly that is a range um, without plays is a bit of a, a problem. Uh, then we get the sherry berry and the and we have to heal. Not really to full, but just just so we don't get bodied by Gust or whatever it has. I think it's Gust. I always had to double check the berries in my head because I can never keep them straight. <laughs> just move, come on. Oh my god. Oh no. It ended the lock. 
Right there. Okay. Yeah, the spinners in this game are awful. Really horrible. Um, they can take forever to turn. That uh, one specifically turn, is awful. They can turn on a dime. They can turn so fast. Sometimes they do a half turn and then turn back <laughs> uh, the way that they were looking before. All right. Um, so in this section, you're supposed to do all these fights with Cheryl here. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to do one of the fights with Cheryl. Uh, this one we don't because this is a rough double fight, so we do it as two separate singles. This is not possible in the original because in the original you couldn't talk diagonally, but in this one you can, so uh, we just talk to the left trainer first and then talk to the right trainer. And yeah, this is the fight where Blaze uh, would have helped because this beauty fly here uh, is going to be a range without Blaze, and it has Gust um, as well, which is why we have to heal. Yeah, it's not even close in this case. It is a range, like you can you can you can kill it uh, if you have better special. It actually went for absorb, which didn't do anything. I'm using. And the uh, and the lady will heal you after every fight, yeah. so that's why you fight this. If you had blaze, that's why you fight do this fight. Yeah, she'll exactly. heal you out of it afterwards. Well, I don't know how it, would, how it would work out, actually, in terms of, like, experience, if you did the other way around, either. Maybe it wouldn't actually matter. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Alright, this fight's also annoying. Um, so you saw me equipping a Sherry Berry. This is to cure uh, paralysis when I get paralyzed. Ideally, we want to keep this for a while. Um, so we don't want to see, like, or. Spark here is fine, but you don't want it to paralyze. Uh, this fight is a little annoying. Okay, so far so good. Quick attack is fine. I don't care. Okay, it should be fine here. Because now I can just mock punch. Mock punch has priority. Um, and I actually outspike this thing, which is interesting. The Kadabra route really feels like a YOLO route to me. It there's like there's so much that you need, especially in the first like yes. hour and a half. There's just so much you need to go right. Yeah, there's um, a lot. And if it goes wrong, go right. it's like if it goes wrong, it's not. It's often not like run ending unless it's optionals. But like like the cherry berry, like you don't want to use it there, so you can save it for Gardenia's gym. Yeah. Um, but you could end up using it there. Like, there's just so many little things that could just take up a lot of time. Thanks, Spider. I I suspect it as much. It's very weird. I, I've never seen a Chimchar like this. Yeah, so this is a, an actual double fight we do. Uh, it's not really dangerous to do it. So we just do it as a double, just to be fast. Uh, you'll is there notice... a reason for doing the right Abra first? Uh, I believe... I don't remember. I believe oh, you okay. should be doing so. There was a reason, yes. Um, I think the right one is just better to do first. Uh, because it... It's like a stats thing. Yeah, it's probably a stats thing. Um, so now we got Kadabra. I still can't use it. It won't obey. I never even... I never knew that. Yeah, you have to be Gardenia in order for it to obey. I just Otherwise, you could just do it and, here. And, you know, just you shut up to music notes, messing so up. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, one extra trainer here. So like I said, we need to do a bunch of extra trainers to register all the Pokémon in the decks. We did one earlier to get... What was it? I don't remember which one it was. Oh, I don't remember either. Um... But yeah, we have to do it to get one. I don't remember if the, bur if the Burmy, if we see the Burmy or anywhere else. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, so Burmy might be one. The Cricketune here, I think, is also one uh, that we don't. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, this is a range, unfortunately. Okay. Is that a crit? Nice. No? Okay. Interesting. Um, I think it's the Cricket Talk that I fought yeah, earlier. 
and that's what it was. But yeah, um, you have to do all these fights to register the decks. Um, yeah, this is so interesting, the difference is, because in any percent you would just leave at yeah. this point. You wouldn't do it's that mostly, Yeah, the route is mostly based off just any percent, and then you do a few extra things on the way, basically. Uh, it gets a little more interesting later, because we will actually go to areas we don't usually go to. Um, right now it's mostly just fighting this extra trainer here, fighting this extra trainer there. We'll actually do a few extra things later. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get a super potion here, like I said. <laughs> the money items are... Or not the money, yet. yeah, the, the money in general is really bad, so I'm just trying to get as, mon as much items as possible, especially healing items. I don't um, know you go through the trees like that. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. Um, so this is Gardenia's gym. Um, there's actually a few things that you have to do um, in this town or city or whatever. Uh, but you can do them in multiple orders, I think. Uh, so on the Scyther route, for example, you would get Scyther first. So you would get the... That's interesting. Um, you would be getting a Scyther in the Grand Underground, which you can unlock physically in this town. Uh, we're not going to be going there. Uh, we technically have to go to the Grand Underground because we're forced to. Just like a tutorial kind of thing. Uh, but we leave immediately. Yeah, okay, we didn't get paralyzed um, before the Sherubis, which is really what you want, so I am super glad it worked out like this. Every Pokémon... Um, not every Pokémon, most Pokémon in this gym can paralyze you, and so did like the, the Pachirizu earlier. But you really want one Cherry Berry for the last fight, which is Gardenia. Um, so you basically just, just have one spare that you want to hold uh, for as long as possible. This fight in particular has three to do, and they can all paralyze you, and they are likely to do it actually. So you really want to have the Cherry Berry by the time you get here. Uh, getting the range here is very good. Uh, there are all ranges, all three of them. In this, in this uh, category in particular, it's actually slightly better. Because we get Flame Wheel earlier. Uh, usually you wouldn't have Flame Wheel until the next fight, so we'd have to Ember these three. In this case, since I have Flame Wheel, this uh, should just kill now. Nice. So basically you have to dodge like, one Paralysis potentially on the first Pidu and then you're good. So I didn't actually lose my Cherry Berry, which means I don't have to equip the other one. Which is really good. This one is Turtwig. wallpaper in this gym is just clouds. <laughs> Turtwig is a range here with Flame Wheel. Uh, one thing to note is that even though we are using Flame Wheel, we still have another problem, actually. All the Pokémon in this gym have Poison Point, or most of them do, I think. Um, so you can get poisoned by hitting them with Flame Wheel. It's not the end of the world, like you can definitely uh, just Antidote before Gardenia and you're fine. This is kind of making me want to run this game again. <laughs> you love this game. You love all the <laughs> games. I, I, I do like the Gen 4 vibes a lot. I don't know, this run is just not very good to grind. Or this game in general is just not very good to grind. But it is a fun route, I think. It's nice to do it every now and then, I think. Run an alt main? I gotta get my I gotta get my any percent time. Yeah, you should run an alt main. We have Cat Expo, shout out to Cat Expo. Which I could not participate yet, but I Oh, is that the category for this this month? Uh, for last month. But we have oh, extended month, it to right. two months now. Um so basically a category will be active for two months, which works out perfectly for me, because I didn't really have time in July, and I really wanted to route something. Uh, Shoutouts to Cat Expo. If anybody in the in the chat doesn't know, Cat Expo is a community where uh, we basically just 
try interesting different categories you say interesting. for different Pokemon games. Uh, every every month, I guess now every two months is a different category, and people vote on them, and it's uh, often fun, <laughs> and sometimes uh, painful. Sometimes it's a little silly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's actually a category every month. It just runs for two months. So there is an, oh. an actually new. So if you want to run Starmie Alt Main, for example, on Switch, um, that's the category for this month or next month, I guess. So, does it yeah. does Cat Expo go through all Pokemon games or just Switch games? Or? It's just Switch games so far, at least. Oh, okay. Um, although I say that, and can I get this two shot here with Power Punch? Maybe. I can. Cool. Uh, so this guarantees a range on the Rotary. I actually don't know if it's still a range, because I might be a little higher level. Yeah, we didn't have to expand yet. Uh, PLA hasn't been selected yet, and BDSP it's the first time. Granted, we only had like one category for BDSP this whole year. So it was always going to be tough to actually have it. So yeah, this is the reason we have like the to, like to run BD. Got stun spore. Um, because the rules rate is always going to outspeed us, so it's important to have that cherry berry. Like the way that people felt about this game when it came out is kind of how a lot of speedrunners feel about speedrunning this game. It's just kind of not great, but very good vibes. Yeah. Unfortunately, the alt main thing is music on, which I totally get it. But that's, I mean, for that for Cat Expo, that is not like for leaderboards or anything. I totally get that. Hey, it's Cynthia. We're gonna right. fight her three times later. <laughs> yep. And it's actually not. Not that bad. It's, if you fought Cynthia as a casual player, you may be inclined to think that it's the like the worst fight or something like that. It's certainly oh, yeah, not. She's tough. She's tough casually. Um, it's not as tough casually in this game, I think, because of fairy types and all that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is actually kind of free in round one. It's not as free in round two and round three. So you. You'll want to watch out, but yeah, for the most part, it is a much safer fight than the others. Oops. Uh, that should be it. Okay. Experience route is slightly different here. Um, since we are fighting extra trainers, uh, we have to do the switching a little differently than what we would do in any percent. For example, the next fight after this one is a fight that I would normally do with Cadabra on any percent, and I'm going to do with. Uh, or this one. Yeah, and any percent this through this whole building you're basically just like switching which Pokemon is leading yeah. for every single fight. It looks very weird, but it's all because of Wake. Uh, and Wake is still like a really bad fight even if you manage to get there with the right experience. It's just awful. Yeah, that's true. It's it can still he can still just destroy you. Yep. You've done everything correctly. That sucks. Okay. Whatever. Fake out is not great, but it, it is what it is. I've got my I've got my brilliant diamond uh album soundtrack playing on shuffle right now and it just happened to land on a battle theme oh, for yeah. this battle. A uh, cool thing about the tool uh, is that you can configure it with whatever music you want to play so if you want to play the game with different music you can. Uh, I have done it before and it's very fun. Um, depends on the soundtrack but yeah I have done it specifically for example with the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire soundtrack it's really cool I think. Because you can get everything to fit, um, more or less. 
Those are great soundtracks too. They did a great job on that, on that yeah. uh, remake. But yeah, that last fight was the first fight we actually used it. Um, and we're gonna start using it a bit more. Uh, like I said, we still have the problem with experience, so we will use the, the Monferno here and there. Uh, just to make sure Cadaver doesn't get too overleveled. Yeah, for the most part, we are going to be changing mains now. After... Basically after Jupiter. I think I've had a run die before to like just forgetting to switch uh, this my elite Pokemon for like one of these fights. <laughs> it happens. It sucks, but it happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate because there's a lot of things. Besides that, there's also like a bunch of other things that can go wrong. Like a lot of these fights are fights that you can get completely obl obliterated on. So it's just. There's so much that can go wrong, so you kind of have to, like... Oops. Uh, I'll save, just in case. This fight should be relatively free. Um, there's just so much that can go wrong in the first hour and a half. There are so many fights in this game. It's not just, like, the big fight, like the gym leaders or these commanders. Sometimes there are random fights. You know, random trainers out of nowhere that can just destroy you, um, which really sucks. It's like when you least expect it to. Yep. Right, we kill the Zubat with Cadaver, but now we're gonna switch to Monferno uh, to do the Scum Tank. Now you'll notice How Scum insolent. You'll notice. Uh, Monferno has... Monferno has a Pekka Berry that we just used. Um, we have it precisely because of this fight, uh, so we don't get poison too early. Uh, we still, like, we don't heal the poison at this point. Uh, we just keep going. It doesn't... so Monferno can actually die um, on this fight. And it's fine as long as it kills the, the scum tank. Which it should. Doesn't kill here. Uh, we might die to after that. Actually, we're probably fine. Yeah, I think we're fine. Yeah, that's true, Peter. Uh, if Monkorno dies, it doesn't really affect anything. You just have to revive it afterwards, but... Um, not really much of a problem if it dies to aftermath there. It is poison though, but we'll have to heal it. And yeah. We're about to see one of the main benefits as well, actually of playing with the music tool instead of music on. Because first we're gonna get the explorer kit, but afterwards we're gonna get the bike. And it's not that the bike music is bad, it's just, it's everywhere, and the music in this game is just so good that yeah, it's nice not to have bike, bike, bike music, and the tool doesn't have bike music. I never noticed that about the music tool either, that is that is very nice, it doesn't have bike music. Yeah. I mean, it would have been probably impossible to support. That is true, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't want to support it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I never even realized that there was no bike music for me. Yeah. Never even thought about it. Oops, not. Uh, there we go. Yeah. yeah, that's where you would go to get a Scyther, for example, if you were doing the Scyther route, or if you were doing like a random. Uh, oops. Other route. Like an alt main, for example. A lot of alt mains are caught in the underground. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're about to have the bike. Um, the bike is pretty fast. Um, it has two gears. We're actually gonna. There's a bit of like movement tech with the bike. It has two gears, a high gear and a low gear. Um, we basically switch the gears uh, usually uh, just before and uh, like just before we enter a building, um, and just as we walk out of one. Or basically what's every. The, what's down. the reason for that? It's because acceler like accelerating with the um, the other gear is faster than the top one. Oh, okay, interesting. So you want to like do it like that so that you are always at like max speed when you are actually full throttle, um, and you try and get the acceleration of the the other one. All right, so now we lost our bike. Because we had a cutscene, um, and it's not registered yet, we're just gonna run for now, and we'll register the bike soon. Whoops. Yeah, bike. Like if you thought that like the walking around movement in this game was horrible, bike movement is like ten times worse. Whoops. Uh, it's so, especially in the high gear, it's so hard to like get a handle on it. It's like definitely uh, something if you if like you want to run this game, it's like worth, worth practicing. Uh, just bike movement on its own. Did I really not have an antidote? Oh, because I used it for okay. That's fine. I used it before Gardenia. Yeah, the the healing items are just awful in this. It's not a lot, unfortunately. Alright. Surely the trainer is gonna kind of look. Alright. Okay, we're fine. This was not safe, but that's okay. That guy's, that guy's kind of rough to get past. That was not safe, but that's okay. After it looked to the other side, I was like, I'll just go. But I was a little late to do it. I should have done it immediately. Yeah, hey, they can turn. There's like no buffer between when they turn. Or if there is, it's like hardly any. Like. He, he, he turned right there, and he could have immediately turned down. Yeah. You'll notice the first one, though, um, I just went full gas past him. Because 99% of the time, it doesn't turn. And if it does, you usually, at least so far, um, all the times I've done it, um, he, he doesn't turn too late, which means I can still react in time. Um, but it is very rare that he turns there. Alright, so that was Pantina. It's the fifth gym leader. The third in Platinum, I believe. If I remember correctly. Um, it's gonna be a while before oh, they this switch the They switch the gym leaders around in this game? In, the, in Platinum, yes. Uh, I think you do Pantina first. And the gym itself is also different. Uh, this this game, was the fight that I yeah. did something wrong on and ruined something in our Yeah, so this fight is very interesting because it's not actually that dangerous. There is one specific scenario where it can be dangerous, but for the most part it's not that dangerous. It's just, it can really mess up your EXP if you do something wrong, or if you get annoyed. So the idea here is we're gonna use Kadabra for the first three Pokémon, and then we're gonna have Kadabra die on the Ponyta. Uh, the print plop is the threat here. Um, we have to be careful about what what we use here. Got Stealth Rock, which is fine. So now we just Confusion twice. Um, if you get Bubble Beam turn 1, you have to do a Psycho Pet. And then Confusion again, because otherwise you could get the, the print plop into Torrent, which is the equivalent of Blaze. At which point if he does a Bubble Beam, he just kills. And you can still, um, this is the range that, that we're talking, okay, I get a crit. This is a 15-6 range on the Rotalia. 
uh, which I guess you missed or something, and then you died. Uh, I don't remember what happened. I was really bad at this game when I started running it. Okay. So. <laughs> no. I didn't understand how no. important everything was. Okay. Oh no, that's kind of rough. This is bad. We may have to reset the thing here. Yeah, you need Pony to kill Kadabra here. No, dude. Oh no. Okay. So this is what I was talking about. That's actually very, very unfortunate. Um, did you save? Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, I have oh, okay. the, the auto save exiting out of the. Oh, okay, okay, right. The thing. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, so you, what you want is to get killed. You could obviously like use something that doesn't confuse a pony, um, but it's still like like you're not likely to have that. And it's nice to get the the hit on the pony because then it means the the chim or the monforno can just finish it off uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, you need it to kill Kadabra there for experience for one thing, but also you need Kadabra to be dead because there's a double fight coming up, and if you okay. have only one alive Pokemon in the party, it doesn't make you do the double fight. Yeah, there's actually multiple double fights. Um, oh, right, there are, They yeah. just skip, but yeah. Um, it's those two reasons. Uh, it's very unfortunate that we got, and it's also unfortunate that it actually couldn't get through confusing the two, two sides. But yeah. Classic. We'll try it again. Uh, again, I wasn't really dead, but I still have to reset because the like the, the alternative here would have been to keep going and like deposit and then basically have to risk uh, like obedience or basically have to hit through disobedience on wake, which is just not wise. Yeah, it's virtually uh, just like impossible. It's not impossible. It's like a 50-50, well, but it's it's bad. With everything else going on with that fight, yeah. it's like because wake it's wake is already a, trying to do. It's a hard enough fight. It would be really bad if you had to, on top of it, uh, hit through the disobedience. Even if it's just the last poke that you have to, to hit through. But yeah. Uh, so far, pretty much the same fight. Hopefully, we don't confuse it this time. This is the perfect fight now. That's good. What percentage is confusion that actually? I don't remember, player? but it's not very high. Let me look it up. I'm guessing it's either 10 or 20. I don't remember exactly. Ten percent chance. So yeah. that's just unlucky. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, it's okay. Not too bad. Like you're expected to die with so many. So many rough fights you're expected to have to do some fights multiple times. It's just the way it is. So fun yeah, fact, that's just one of the things that can go wrong. But there's stuff like that throughout the entire like first half of this. Yeah. Run. Fun fact: if you don't, um, if you play with music there, uh, there is actually a bug uh, that I don't think a lot of people know. Uh, if you play with music and you have. The we're gonna get accuracy here. Uh, this is a safety thing. We don't technically need it. It's mostly just for one specific scenario in a fight. Um, we got the extra revive as well, just for safety. We're gonna get the calcium. That so after the cutscene with so usually when you go into the cutscene with uh, what's his face um, Barry, you're in a bike and you have the bike the bike music and all that. If you then, when you finish the, the fight, the bike music will keep playing, and but you will not be on the bike. <laughs> it's very weird, and it, you can only really see it uh, in music on. But yeah, this game is certainly one of the games of all time. Alright, so this is an option that we fight. Oh my god, I almost had a heart attack yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, this fight, this fight, it's actually, oh, nice it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have sure. been that bad to do it uh, even on any percent. Like, if you do this fight on any percent, uh, since Kadabra is dead, it's not going to get experience anyway. Um, so obviously it's time loss, but it's not like it would ruin your, like, experience. And this fight, we do it just to get the Kleka uh, entry in the Pokedex.
It is pretty nice, in a way, to do a lot of these extra fights, because a lot of them are just normal, uh, like, spinners that you would have to avoid, and in this one, you just fight them, because you have to fight them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Alright. So, yeah, as you can see, we walk right past one of the double fights there, uh, because we only have one Pokémon it's not triggered. Same goes for these runners there. They're also a double fight, doesn't get triggered. Same goes for these two. And another one right here. <laughs> so this is another reason why we just have one. I would used to not get off the bike and go through the grass there. I would I would go up and try to avoid the the spinner. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just making it harder for myself. Uh, yeah. Okay, this fight sucks. It's one of my least favorite fights in the entire game. Um, because you want to leave. So there are multiple reasons this fight sucks. It has two ways to confuse it. Uh, I do try and get rid of the first way immediately with... Okay. Should be fine. Uh, I do try to get rid of the first way immediately with uh, Tom because it has... I forget exactly... I think it's Confuse Ray, actually. But yeah. Uh, it can also confuse you with Confusion, which is really bad. Take that. Another Sturdy. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Um, and another thing is that you want to leave this fighter up the half health. Um, and the reason for this is that we're gonna we're gonna have to have the Chimchar or the Monferno at um, within kill range from the Quagsire in in uh, in Wake's gym or in Wake in the Wake fight. Are the repels tied in this run as well? Uh, I should have one extra. Okay, I remember when I was learning, I, w I kept like running out here, and it was just, oh okay, yeah, so yeah. many. No, in this in this park specifically, it shouldn't run out. Um, okay, but it is a bit of a different um, shop. Uh, so yeah, um, hold on. yeah, I remember you. It, it would buy like just enough to get through this route. Pretty much. So grass not where is grass not. So we're going to teach a couple of... Oh. going to teach Shockwave. Uh, oh, Psycho Cut. This is also slightly different than what I would do in any percent. Um, revive the Kadabra. I'll use an Energy Root. I will try to use Energy Root as much as possible, but I also don't have a lot of them. Um, Save here, just in case I accidentally mess this up. Never mind. Um, you don't want to do this fight. It's a double battle. It sucks, and it messes up your experience as well. So we're gonna do it uh, as two singles. This fight can be annoying as well. Uh, I had a really bad fight here on the practice run that I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Fake out is not great. What you want to see is Growl. Not great. I think I should leave Fibia or whatever. Whatever the cadaver decides to use, I think. I don't know. Hopefully we'll be fine. I'm actually not sure. It's been a while. Okay, this is fine now. Because Easy. Um, you usually want to do Grass Knot and then Shockwave because you can use Kinesis and Shockwave will ignore that. Um, but yeah, that wasn't the greatest fight, but it could have been a lot worse. Uh, the worst you can have is Glamu using Fury Cutter and hitting five times, which I've had. Uh, and then you have to heal and it's so bad. So another thing to note about the experience route, 
the route is built also in addition to the wake thing that we talked about being 30 there. It's also built around being 25 for this fight specifically, or rather for this Gyarados specifically, because this Gyarados is a range if you are not um, level 25. If you are level 25, um, I believe the low roll does exactly the, the amount of health Gyarados has. And this Gyarados is... Again, this game is not very nice. It's This is like a fully evolved Pokémon in the water route. Uh, or in a route that is raining. Very early in the game, still. Alright, time to do shopping. I suck at shopping, but... Oh, this shop was always really rough for me. Yep. Uh... I'm also not really used to running turbo. Is there a, a trick in the shops to make the text move faster, or do you just not bother with so, it? So... I usually just mask naturally. Um, oh, okay. Or rather, that's what I usually did. I haven't really... I'm running with turbo recently. Um, Right. It's slightly different. And Turbo is actually kind of bad because this game is very sensitive on some on some of the menus. Okay, I forgot some stuff. Um, uh, I forgot this. Okay. There we go. Don't buy anything here yet. At any percent you would buy Super Repels there, but it's a bit of a different one. Yeah, we're gonna buy all of the X items for our run. Which is a lot of them, by the way. This just shows incredibly how incredibly cursed the entire Elite Four is going to be. So this is all the X items for all three rounds? Yep. 53 X specials. 53 X specials, oh my god. <laughs> it is worth noting that Brilliant Diamond is a lot worse than Shining Pearl for this category. Um, it is also slightly worse um, in any percent, but not nearly as relevant. Uh, we're gonna buy a few TMs. Um, I'll explain those in a sec. Uh, you'll notice our money is really tight. We now have completely wasted, but we have everything. Yeah, that's the entire shop. Um, we bought four, uh, actually five um, moves. We bought bulldoze, which is something that you don't normally buy. Um, I will use that much later in the run for one fight. That's it. Um, I'll explain it when I get there. Um, we got thunderbolt, which we'll also use much later. We got flamethrower, psychic, and dazzling gleam. Flamer flamethrower is going to be used on the chimchar, or the inferno. Uh, and we're actually going to teach it here. Uh, exactly, this is exactly where you want to teach it. Um, we're going to heal the thing first. going to give the metronome. going to use a calcium. Yeah, this whole town is just like menuing. Yep. Menuing and shopping. going to teach Psychic, which is another move that we bought. Um, going to use it on... On Kaza. Uh, I don't forget. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was plus one. <laughs> it was. Okay. Done with that menu. It's like the hardest menus in the game is like menus and shopping in the game is this town. Yep. Alright. And this gym, gym kinda sucks. Weird. Um you have to backtrack a bunch. There's like yeah. not really a good way to do it's it. It's funny that I feel like all the runners, there's not a lot of people that run this game, but I feel like everyone who does does this gym slightly different. <laughs> like a puzzle. Yeah, there's there's some things are faster, some things are slower. There's not really one way to do it because the whole thing is kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing so. just sucks. <laughs> um... So so there's not there's there's several ways to do it. Either you lose it every time. I can relate. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> 
kind of the same. I like I tried to practice it. Like when I tried to come back to this game, I tried to practice it. It just went out the window. I think what I do is just basically what Etiquette did uh, when I was watching like him run back in the day. Um, so I just sort of like I looked at that and then I just ended up using that. Uh, Jesus Christ! I teleported there. Can you? Movement is is nasty in this gym. Yeah. Uh, you really? have to backtrack a bunch. The spin there's like two spinners that you have to get past, and they're yeah. and I'm actually one of this save. this one is fine, but they're both. No, I know they're they're both horrible. Never mind. Yeah, they're both, they're both horrible. The one in the middle, the one in the middle on the bottom, uh, rotates in the yeah if, in a predictable pattern. But this guy and the one in the top middle are really awful. Yeah, because they can just look at you and, and on a dime. Come on. And then and they can take forever to turn as well. Yeah. There's actually a faster way this to do guy, this. This guy can. There's actually a faster way to do this. If you run in front of them and then walk. Um, so they, we didn't actually explain how spinners work. Um, Does anybody know? They, ba they basically have... <laughs> <laughs> they basically have what we call like areas. Um, where if you run on those areas, they will turn that way next doesn't mean that you can so you can influence where they will turn you cannot influence when they will do it but you can influence where they will turn uh, so usually you try to run basically lure them into run into turning a, a certain direction if you walk for example um you don't get the same uh the same it doesn't really um trigger them uh and i'll finish explaining in a sec so first we have this fight which is mailing which is usually fine um you have to act special twice usually because it always lights screens. Train punch is not great, that's okay. Um, okay, I have to act speed now. Don't crit me. Okay, that's fine. Um, it can use flash, which is why we have the X accuracies. Um, and normally on any percent you actually only buy one, and then if you get flashed three times, you know, just hit me. Um, I think this is another one of those fights where if you just like do one thing wrong, then you're just Yeah, done. another thing that you can do wrong is if you accidentally use Confusion from the Machoke, which kills, um, you're gonna have a problem on the Lucario, because we actually have the Metronome now, uh, and you need it to Psychic the Machoke once to be able to get a boost on the Metronome, just good enough to actually one-shot the Lucario here. The reason we X-Speed is because we were under um, 38 HP, uh, which would be, I guess, um, the... I forget which move uh, it has that can kill there. <laughs> but yeah. It's just like, if you if you forget to do, like, if you're not looking and it uses Flash and you, yeah. like, don't see it and don't use the X-Accuracy, then you are then you could just be done. Like, if you forget, if you miss an input on something, it can just take you out. Yeah. Um, Ideally, what you would want is just um, bulk up three times. I like that deposit cadavers and giant letters on this on the notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot the metronome. So Monferno is actually over half HP. Uh, I would want it to be around a half HP. Uh, hopefully, this is actually better um, for this specifically because I'm. This fight really sucks. Um, I had a really bad fight on this uh, specifically on my any percent PB. It's basically like the major time loss I have in my PB there. Um, because you want to live this fight as well again, like around half health or something like that, uh, which is not easy. Um, for multiple reasons, uh, the fight is pretty bad in terms of like the amount of damage you can, that you can take sometimes. And there's also so you can, if you're trying to go for like half health, um, you can get screwed over either by getting uh, hit too hard, or you can get life due from the Clefairy, which sucks. Um, so you really don't want that. I might there's another actually... like. There's another like interesting optimization, um, 
when you come into this fight, you can either do it talking to the top or the bottom trainer. Um, but if you talk to the top one, then Lucas will leave the screen faster after that. Yeah. Fight. That's a nice optimization. Don't fly through, please. Okay, good. Should be fine. Uh, it's a little high health, but it should be fine. Um, I believe the Quagsire should still one-shot this, so we're good. Alright. Now we have to get Fly. It's very important to get Fly. Uh, if you forget it, it is very bad news. Because you need Fly later to, to go to Sol Solcyon. And it's very easy to miss. Uh, actually, this game has a lot of HMs that are incredibly easy to miss. It's just random Pokeball yeah. here. Well, it's just sitting on the ground here. <laughs> I don't actually know if there's like any dialogue that alludes to that, um, where they explain that it's there or that you should be looking out for that. I don't know. Oh, I could have done that. Now we repel. Yeah, again, we don't want Kadabra on that fight either, just for experience. Um, but now we're back with Kadabra, we're gonna use Kadabra. For a long time, actually, now. Um, Monferno is pretty much done for a while. Actually, I guess Monferno will slightly help, if you could call it that. Um, on wake. But that's about it. Not really gonna do any damaging moves. Yeah, Kadabra is a great Pokemon. Uh, once you get... Once you get it to obey and all that. Um, <laughs> once you're able to use it. Yeah, once you're able to use it and once you have like, Psychic and all that, it's really good. Um, it's sort of like a Blast Cannon. Okay, this is a range. Unfortunate that we missed it, but that's okay. Uh, I... It's actually good. I'm not supposed to use um, another psychic. <laughs> I'm glad I used disabled. That would have been a mistake. Um... Alright, gotta be careful here. Yeah, this route could be kind of scary because all of their. Uh... Yeah, their, their patterns are consistent if you can get through the route consistently, but because movement is so bad in this game, it's like it's it's really hard to get through the route consistently, especially on the bike. So it's easier just to run. Um, and that last spinner is super blind, so he can only see like one tile in front of him. Yep. Let's go, moment. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, girl. I didn't know that you could just go to the bottom there and get past her like that. Don't talk to the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, she has... What's it called? Um, she cannot see you if you're all the way at the bottom. I did not know that. I always used to wait for her to turn. <laughs> and I've well, fought her a couple times. <laughs> Yeah, we got an extra calcium there that we've been using a bit. Um, this game is very good for like special attackers. <laughs> There's a lot of good oh, items. That was that was weird. You just like ran in place for a second. Yeah, that's how it works. That's just BDSP movement and just the game Classic. itself. Being this gym is annoying because it just takes so long to get through. It takes a while. It's not too bad. Um, There's so many required. It's nice, well. like it's a nice break because um, for the most part, in this hour and a half, you have to be super focused. Um, you're yeah, never the bored. The fights are easy. It's, it's like, you're not. You're never bored. It's a nice. Sure. It's a chill time right before. It's a chill like, time the just before the whole game. Yeah, exactly. but, um, it's just kind of like you just have to go through the motions yeah. here, pretty much. I have a harder time with stuff like victory road or yeah, uh, like the steel gym, stuff like that. But 
But yeah, we're approaching Wake. Um, the first major barrier of the run. So Wake. Yeah, is... even if you do everything right, he can just like he can just tell you that you're yeah, almost done. Yeah, you have to be lucky. Um, for sure. So Wake has three Pokemon. The first one is a Gyarados. Second one is a Quagsire, and the third one is a Floatzel. Um, and they're all extremely scary. Um, the Gyarados at level 30 with this Kadabra will die to Shockwave. It is a 15 and 16 main. It is what it is, like you cannot get it any higher. Um, so if you miss it, you're dead, because it will immediately kill you. I think it has like Crunch or whatever. Um, so you have to hit the 15 and 16, uh, which is why I did the extra trainer earlier to get the, the special attack EVs. Uh, normally on any percent you would just get it, you would just buy a, like a calcium at the store, which is enough as well. Uh, but like I said, like the money was so tight um, that I kind of just, I would rather do it like that. Um, and that's the first Pokemon, so that's basically just hit the just hit the range with Shockwave. Then the second Pokemon is a Quagsire, and Quagsire is a little awkward because it has two moves that you don't really want him to use. One of them is Haze, that will basically eliminate all stat changes, and we need uh, we need an X speed to outspeed the Floatzel. Um, we can kill it with. Uh, grass Knot, just straight up, but we need to outspeed it, otherwise we just get one shot. Um, since we can't really set up on the Gyarados, we have to try and set up on the Quagsire. Unfortunately, Quagsire, like I said, has Haze and it also has Rain Dance. Uh, with Rain Dance uh, being also something you don't want to see, because even if you outspeed the, the Floatzel, if, rain, if, uh, if there's rain dance, uh, if there's rain, uh, the flow cell will just one-shot you with Taka Jet, which is a priority move. Um, so, also a no-go. So basically what we're gonna do, and this is where Monferno is gonna come in, is we're actually gonna switch the battle style we have to switch instead of set, which is the normal style that you have when you do like a casual playthrough usually. Um, or unless you're playing Scarlet Battle, which <laughs> you have no choice. Um, but what this means is, is that you're gonna be able to switch to Monferno right after the Gyarados. Uh, not a hard switch, like a little switch, um, like between the um, between the the pokes. And then Monferno is gonna use Taunt. It will outspeed the Gar the the Quagsire. Um, it will use Taunt, and Quagsire should be killing. Monferno immediately because Monferno is within kill range. Uh, and that's why we wanted to have. Uh, let me just focus on this menu real quick. Uh, we don't need to heal anything else. Let the battle stop switch. Surprise, I don't have to heal. Usually, Cadaver takes a bit of damage from something. Um, yeah, we did save. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, you're gonna use Taunt, you're gonna get killed, which is why we have Monferno at around half health or whatever. Um, and then we have like a couple turns of Taunt, uh, where it's not gonna use... It's gonna be forced to use one of these attacking moves, either Mudshot or Scald. What we want to see is Mudshot, so we can use the X speed and then basically finish it off. Unfortunately, so if it uses Scald, we have to heal. Um, and it's usually gonna be bad news. Okay, there's the 15 and 16 we hit. If it uses much shot, it can still also be bad news if it takes too much damage, like a crit or a high roll. Because you need to be like 51 health in order to not get one shot by Aqua Jet. Um, so this is the taunt. Good kill here. Yeah, just use a skull, one for no dice. Quagsire is taunted now. Are we gonna X speed? Mudshot, please. 
Then I do. Okay. One more chance. Much hot, please. Dude, that's a high roll. Pretty sure we just dead. That's a high roll. I'll try it anyway, but I'm pretty sure we just dead because that's a high roll. That's super unlucky. Not that you would need like like you you need to be lucky in any case. Uh, but yeah, I'll just like I'll demonstrate it. I'm gonna use Apple Chat. But yeah, yep, there it is. That's very unfortunate, but it is. This specific scenario is not as common <laughs> yeah. as Thanks, you would. Thanks, T-Pat. Hi, T-Pat. <laughs> T-Pat would know all about that scenario. This is all um, T-Pat's fault. <laughs> so, Scald is bad news. Mudshot is usually good news unless it crits or high rolls. That's literally a high roll. Um, you need to be uh, 50 health in order to not get killed. And actually, the way it works is... Um, the the float soul will actually only go for um, the aqua jet if it is guaranteed to kill. So we can actually do more than forty nine, um, but it will only go for it if you have forty nine or less. Yeah, that's just like one of the things that can go wrong with this fight too. There's like yeah, can't that's just one of the things. There's this fight. Right, let's see so if we hit the range second time. Okay, we got it. Yeah, it is pretty much, I think it's, I'm guessing it's just 50 50 to go for Scald or Mudshot. Uh, which is extremely bad. This is one of the main reasons why this game just sucks to grind because an hour and a half in, basically I have almost like yeah, a coin flip could... to just lose the run or something. Any, any run could just be a waste of an hour yeah. and a half. And there's literally nothing. And there's so much it. that can still go wrong like before this, but yeah, um, it just sucks. Alright, we have the same setup, we're gonna X speed, we're hoping for mud shot, no crit, no high roll, just be nice this time. There we go, there we go, okay, we're fine now. Nice. And now we just crash not in the fight. Not too bad, we only died once. Yeah, this not game is bad. this game is like nice to run every once in a while, but it's it's really rough to grind just because of this yeah. fight. The good thing about this is that this was basically the last fight um, of this like section that is like really hard. Um, after this, we actually get to play the game a little more chill. There's still a lot yeah, of fights to... later that can be tough, but it's not nearly as bad as this, where every fight is you don't bad. Have to worry about experience anymore. Yes, yeah, it's it's, that too. it's really like nothing. It, nothing matters quite so much anymore as it did up to this point. Yeah. You'll notice the... The cadaver actually leveled to 31 after defeating the Flotel. So it is that tight. And we were actually... Yeah. If you noticed earlier, we actually got to 30 on the last Pokémon before Wake. So it is just that tight. Yeah, it's very, very specific. All right. That's another. If you forget to talk to this guy, you can just go <laughs> really far and just. Uh, <laughs> have you done that? Before? And then not be able to progress. I think so. That's pretty unfortunate. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna save this. Uh, this, this fight is technically not that bad. Um, but there is shoutouts to Tpat who mentioned how this fight can go wrong once. Because it's totally here, let's quick claw. Um, you have to set up one X item, which means the Starly can potentially get two turns on you uh, with the Quick Claw on the second one. Um, and if it crits one, one of them, um, you are dead, so... Okay, we could just go for double team. Double team is not a problem because we have Shockwave. And yeah, now we just blitz through the fight. It is worth mentioning the PP usage is very different um, on this run than on what you would normally do on any percent. Um, mostly because we, since we we have to do like the extra trainers and all that, we have to switch things around a bit uh, to accommodate. 
Yeah, this fight is fairly free. Yeah, it feels like after Wake, all the fights, or a lot of the fights, suddenly become yeah, much it gets much well. easier, um, less less stressful. Like it, this game it feels like every fight before Wake is a little bit stressful. Yeah, and exactly. After Wake that's that's what I was like trying to hint at. It's like once you get past Wake, you actually get to play the game. It's very fun. I think uh, the problem is getting yeah. to like just getting past Wake. It's just so hard. All right. Now we backtrack. Um, as JT mentioned, yeah, you can backtrack without talking to the grunt, and then bad news. Yeah, you can get you can get pretty far away from him before <laughs> the game stops you from progressing. Yeah. Whoops. Okay, I'm not gonna trust that. Um, I was about to say another thing that can happen is that I, w I alluded to it earlier. Um, you can forget to get fly. <laughs> Veilstone. If you forget to get Blind Veilstone, um, I actually was supposed to not video that, but that's okay. I'll stop that in a sec. Um, if you forget, you need. You need to. Okay, I have to talk to him. Um, if you forget to fly, you have to go back to the Veilstone, which sucks. Um, because the idea is to fly here after this fight. Okay, stop here. Normally with normally would keep the repel up. Because the next part you would go to is the fog route, uh, which we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and you need to you need a repel um, to get through like the first part, grass and all that. In this category, we're actually gonna do a little bit of a, a detour. Um, to get something a little extra because of round two. I think I also flew once after that fight without talking to Cynthia. <laughs> It's just like not on the screen after the fight, so it's so easy to just like <laughs> be like, oh, there's nothing else to do here. <laughs> oh yeah, and then you only realize it when you talk to the Psydux, right? Yeah, you get to the Psydux and you can't, you can't go through them. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, so we're gonna go to the ruins here because we need to find an unknown. Because it is a Pokemon that you need for the Pokedex. And I don't believe you can find it anywhere else. Uh, I don't know why I went. So we're gonna run from it. We don't actually have to catch it or anything like that. But you do have to see it. Yeah, it's sometimes pretty bad spider. Uh, that one was actually pretty fast. Sometimes it takes a while for one to spawn. Um, okay, my notes are missing the menu here, but that's okay. Um, we repel here now. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of more extra fights. This is one of them. Uh, you would normally just go up to the Psyducks and do the Cynthia cutscene. There's so many like uh, NPC characters I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing about this run. We get to explore them. a bit more. You get to go to more areas. I'm I'm sad you don't get to like there's still a decent amount of areas. Um this is the wrong thing. Uh wait, what am I doing? No, no, no. Whatever, it's fine, it works. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong fight. <laughs> is this guy's name? I was like it makes no sense to use I thought I'm gonna break, but that's okay. Um okay. Do have to watch out for like my PP management here, since we are doing all these extra fights. That got me again. The shockwave being yellow and Psyduck being yellow. I was like, why are you using, <laughs> why are you using the yellow move on the yellow Pokemon? Yes. 
That happens to me in Let's Go all the time. <laughs> Alright, to fight this one as well. This one has a, there's a range on the Hackney, which is the last Pokemon. Not too consequential though. Um, but yeah, now we should have just a bunch of fights that are pretty easy, for the most part. Now this one probably got to you as well, but this is just for PP management. He was shocked by one Pichu. <laughs> and it is guaranteed to kill, so... I didn't even notice, I was just, I was just like excited to see Pichu. <laughs> Yeah, he does its fight yeah, for like Pichu, Pichu and Pichu, Pikachu, I think. I don't think you see either of them anywhere else uh, in the normal run. Yeah, I don't think so. And I don't think you see Abony either. Um, I feel like you don't see Pichu that often in any Pokemon. Yeah, that is true. Uh, the previous one had an Apom. Okay, I missed the range. Um, at an Apom, we're actually going to Psyduck. I'm trying to remember which one. I think the giraffe rig doesn't show up anywhere else. I'm not sure about the other two. Yeah, there's there's no giraffe rig in, in any percent. Okay, that trainer only looks down and left. So we go around basically. And yeah, this is the side ducks. We're about to do the fog route. Um, fog route is very interesting. Uh, so the fog actually works slightly differently in this game. Um, it has a different effect. In the original, it it decreased your accuracy in battle. In this one, it doesn't. Um, so we can actually just go... I thought there was more to, to the cutscene, I forgot. <laughs> um, Those little mounds in the grass are trainers, right? I did not mean to pick up that hyper potion, but that's okay. I did not know that was an hyper potion. <laughs> I guess... Actually, that's kind of useful. How did I never notice that? That's actually kind of useful for this run, uh, having an extra healing item there. Pretty good. Um, but yeah, in the fog route you can't really see very well. Um, but you can't just do this entire thing with fog because it's not really going to matter in terms of like the battles. Uh, and it's slower to get defog. Um, for defog you have to go into the Great Marsh or whatever it's called. And then you have to use it here, which is also like... A little awkward. You have to open like the full catch and click on it. Not the greatest thing in the world. Um, yeah, it's a little hard to see on with with fog, but once you get used to it, it's actually not that bad. It's a little better on this run specifically as well, um, because this optional that we have here is one we fight. Oh, okay. So we don't have any issue here. We fight this one. I believe because of the Mothin. I think it's the Mothin that we don't see anywhere else. Uh, we do yeah, see a Luxio elsewhere, and we do see an Onyx elsewhere, so yeah, it's definitely the Mothin. Yeah, the Fogger is not too bad to get through, but the last trainer pass always, yeah. like, he takes so long to turn that it, that it starts, like, playing tricks on my eyes. Yep, <laughs> it's exactly. I'm like, has he turned yet? <laughs> is that his eyes? <laughs> Yeah, it's so <laughs> like it's so easy to tell when you first get there, and then the longer it takes, that like it starts to morph and yeah. distort the visual. It is the hardest one to see for sure. Um, there's also a ninja in this route, so you have to watch out for that one. Um, but yeah, if you hit optionals in this game, it's usually not too bad. You just have to worry about PP management for the most part. And whether or not you are choice spec, uh, we are gonna we don't have the choice specs yet, but we'll we'll get them soon enough. Um, and yeah, once you're choice spec, then it is a bit of a problem um, if you hit the wrong trainer and you use the wrong move. But for the most part, Kadabra can handle. It's the main reason Kadabra is such a good Pokemon for this. Like it can handle pretty much anything. Um, once it gets hit, it usually gets hit pretty hard. But it doesn't get hit very often. Though. It doesn't get hit very often because it usually outspeeds, even though it's actually a quiet nature. I don't think we mentioned that. The stats are fixed for this cadaver, uh, which is why also the run is kind of nice because you always know exactly which ranges you're going to get um, and all that. You're always going to have the same stats uh, at the same points. Um, and the nature is also fixed. It's quiet, which is plus special attack and minus speed. Um, the minus speed is not 
great, but Kadabra is a pretty fast Pokémon uh, to begin with already. And in addition to that, it has 31 IV, I believe, uh, speed, uh, which definitely helps. So usually you're going to be outspeeding most things, um, which means as long as you one-shot things, which you can, uh, most, for the most part, you should be fine. Uh, you shouldn't be taking too much damage. Yeah, almost done with the fog route. Have this is the last fight in Fog Route, and then we have the spinner that we were talking about. Hopefully, the last fight. Hopefully, <laughs> the last fight. That is true. The last routed fight. <laughs> yep. I actually don't know what the last one has. I I think it's not great, as far as I remember. But yeah, I think it's not a very good fight. Okay, he's looking it down. There we go. If you couldn't see it, then I don't know. It's it. It, it was there. <laughs> Just believe me. I usually have to like stand up in the fog route and like get higher than my yeah. screen. To, Some like... people like to like change. I don't know brightness settings and all that sort of thing. Um, on their monitors, um, there was actually another meta which was inverting the the colors on the switch, which may makes the whole thing like really freaky, but it makes it slightly easier to see. The problem is that you have to. Play the entire game like that, which is not a not a very fun experience, I think. <laughs> yeah. So this Krogan here that's coming has Sucker Punch. You usually don't wanna be you wanna be like with a decent amount of health, uh, because the sucker punch can do quite a lot if it uses it. Didn't use it, it so it's fine. Um, but yeah. Alright. I was about to make a comment about the music, but I just realized it's not the same music that everyone else is hearing. <laughs> what music do you have? Uh, it is Route 210. Uh... I think it's the Valley Wind oh, Parks I know, route. I know. No, no, 210 is the one in the rain. Actually, is it... I think it is, yeah. I think it's the run with the rain. Up. Let me look up Route 210. I know 209 is the one be like below Solosion, so I think 210 is the one above Solosion, as far as I remember. Route 210 is the tall grass route with the with yeah. the double fight. Yep, exactly. And I think oh, and, yeah, and oh, the yeah, same the, music goes through. The, the same the, music goes through to goes through the, the one the on the right, route. which is not 210 actually. Yeah, so you're right. Uh, the one on the right is 212, I think. Alright, I'm gonna do something interesting here. Uh, this guy here gives you a few items. Oh, this is One of them is the Wise Glasses. And the items he gives depend on the time of the day. Um, and so we're actually gonna change the time. As you, you do have to walk out of the thing. But we do that. Nice menu, that was really fast. And then go back, and he gives us... Okay, we got activate the turbo again and yeah we got shock specs now um now we're gonna do a little bit of a shop i don't have input for this said everyone whoever ran this category um three revives and max super potions which should be yeah around 13 makes sense so now we're doing a little better on items all right, we're gonna swap the Rostberry. I am gonna heal. Uh, I can use the potion, sure. Um, actually, I shouldn't have healed, but that's okay. Because uh, there's a couple of fights where I can get hit before. Um, yeah, I will add inputs to my notes at some point. <laughs> that's what I always say. But the thing is, I think a lot of... For this game specifically, a lot of notes don't have inputs for that specific shop. And I think the reason is that whoever made the notes for in, like in the first place didn't add them. And then everyone just copied over them. And they just didn't yeah, add so, the run inputs. is so long that like during the run you're like, oh I'll add it afterwards. And yeah, then, exactly. It's always the same it's thing. It's like three hours later and you don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh 
Uh, middle. Okay. Got a little confused there. Um, so, in this gym, you generally don't fight anyone except the gym leader. In this case, I need to get a few pokes for the the Pokedex. So we're actually gonna do we're gonna purposely mess up the puzzle. Um, the puzzle is always the same. You you always have to go to the same doors. Um, everything is like preset. Um, in this case, we're gonna mess it up to fight a Drifloon, or I guess a couple of deep Drifloons here. It has two. And then we're gonna fight a Haunter as well in another room. Both of these pokes are pokes that you wouldn't really see anywhere else. Alright, this one has the Haunter, and then we have Fantina. Fantina is a fight that usually doesn't go wrong, but it can uh, if you get crit. As with pretty much any fight, if you get crit, you're usually dead. This one sucks. This is why I didn't really want to heal, uh, but it's okay. You can get Sucker Punch from this one. It is not guaranteed to go for it, though. That's fine. I mean, I have to save anyway before Fantina, so... We'll just heal it then. I feel, yeah, I feel like every gym leader in this game is just like, one wrong input and it's over. Yep. Pretty much. So we actually equipped the Rostberry on the Cadaver because the Drift Limp here, which is a lead on Fantina, has Will-O-Wisp. Um, and we want to heal that immediately. Uh, if we didn't have the berry, it would still be fine. We like we can heal with the heal powder or whatever. But having the the Ross berry just makes it to, so we don't lose a turn with that, um, which is pretty good. How does she get her hair like that? That's crazy. <laughs> the models for like all the trainers and all that are like really good in this game. I think they look really good. Um, we're gonna start with the next death. Strange Tap is perfect. Ideally, we see her just doing that over and over again. Okay, Fly is not perfect, but as long as we don't get crit, we should be fine here. Okay, we're good. But we didn't even have to bother with like the burns or anything like that. But that actually, that's actually a pretty good fight. Uh, we do have to heal afterwards, but that. Not a huge deal. And yeah, that's Fantina. Uh, we're actually going to take quite a bit of a detour now. Um, compared to normal any percent. Because we have a few extra fights that we want to do, and we do that in different areas, so it's gonna be a little different now. We unfortunately won't be exploring too much of the route we're going to. Uh, we're gonna be going to the the route below um, Arthon. Uh, although first we will actually go to Route 208, which is the one on the left. Just fight a couple of trainers. We could have fought them technically when we first went there, but it's just not as good, especially because at that point we still had all the obedience shenanigans to worry about. Um, so it just makes sense to do it now rather than before. Takes so long to get out of. Yep. <laughs> they really should have made. They could. They could have just put a teleporter yep. or something. <laughs> That's what they did in Platinum, I think. I mean, the gym in Platinum is actually different. It has like it's not this gym. The puzzle is completely different. 
Yeah, I think aren't all all the gyms different puzzles? I don't know if they're all different. I want to say at least Rourke isn't, but um... maybe I'm thinking about different games. Whoops. I don't know. Whoops. Okay, so we have to heal Psychic, uh, and we have to heal. So we Ether Psychic, and we have to. There's Shadow Ball. We got this earlier. We're gonna pitch it over Shockwave. It's gonna come in handy on some fight. That's the that's the whole menu. Okay. Do we just keep Monferno fainted for a while? Yep. Exactly. Just use it as like a way to swap out items quickly. Um, that is part of the reason. Yes. Uh, so this is the the first fight we're gonna do. Um, that is part of the reason. Yes. Um, oh, the other one is that we're actually going to use it at some point and might as well have it set there. Um, right. Another good thing is that we still have, um, I didn't mention it, but we still have the Switch battle style. But since Monferno is dead, we're not going to get proper. We want to switch every after every poke. Because we have no more pokes alive. Oh, the in the settings? Yeah, and we're actually going to use oh, okay. uh, the Switch. Um, Later. Actually, no, that, we won't that's use not in, switch, You don't do that in the any percent glitch. Yeah, in any percent, there's a different strat for. Okay. For Byron, which I could have adopted here. I just didn't really have the time to uh, reroute the money uh, to make it work. Because um, the any percent route uses Stealth Rock strat for Byron. I use a bit of a different strat uh, because I want to stealth Stealth Rock. Basically. But I'm pretty sure I could make it work uh, with the talk. It's just when I first routed this, um, I just, yeah, I did it this way and then I just never got around to, to do it the other way. I actually routed this like two years ago. Huh? And I basically didn't run much of this since over a year ago, I think. Uh, I ran it a couple weeks ago to de rust, basically. What are the what are the odds this is a world record pace run? Um, on Brilliant <laughs> Diamond, I don't know if anyone held. I mean, Spider did um, a run, I guess, um, on Brilliant Diamond. No one else has really done it, I think. Um, this is not PB pace at the moment, so it's not record pace, I guess. Assuming I have record. Oh, okay. Okay. My God, Jesus Christ. I want to, like, be careful here, because there's, like... Um, oh, record is 444. Okay, actually, no. I can fight this one. Oh, I just Pearl. have to watch out for the other one. Oh, yeah, there is only one Brilliant Diamond Rush. Yeah. Might have submitted, which is not very fight yet. But it is faster than Spiders, I think. In any case, like, it, it wouldn't ever be faster than... than Shining Pearl. Shining Pearl is just much better, because of Palkia. Because in this run, we're going to use Dialga for basically all the late game stuff. But Palki is much better. Um, it's already slightly better on round 1. And it gets just so much better later on. And that's that's just for like these categories, right? Not for the not for the regular category? Yeah, so for any percent, Palkia would be considered slightly, ever so slightly better. But it's not... <laughs> Not enough to really matter. Yeah, it's not really enough like middle to matter too much, which is why the times are more or less equivalent on both categories. Baby doll eyes, that's interesting. Okay. Um But yeah. So yeah, we don't really got to go to this area. Um, which is really nice. And now <laughs> I've never even seen this area before. <laughs> In this yeah, game, it is a bit unfortunate. There's <laughs> like the, the like the mansion or castle or whatever they call that. Uh, it is it is it is unfortunate that we don't really get to see a lot of what the game has. Uh, in the post game, it's the same thing. Like the post game is actually really nice in my opinion, or at least it was when I played it casually. I think it, I think it's pretty good, um, but we only get to see like half of it. 
Is it the Battle Frontier? Is that this game? Uh, in this case, it's only Battle Tower because it's a diamond uh, oh, okay. remake. So this is not a mistake. Yes, I don't have a repel on. This is intended. I want to see a tentacle. Because as weird as it sounds, there are no other tentacles that we will see in the run, aside from this. <laughs> so Nobody likes tentacle. Nobody wants it in their party. I don't want another... Okay. This is... Now this is time lost, though. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, usually to find a tentacle, we just get one here. Um... This tentacle looks really weird compared to the Let's Go tentacle. Something about it, I don't know. Alright, that's another spinner. Yeah, no one wants to see a tentacle. Um, but yeah, you want to see a tentacle there. Unfortunately, you can also get pretty trolled by the encounters there because you can get, like, Wingle um, or Pelipper even. Or Tentacruel, I think, you can also show up there. <laughs> um, Classic. So you can be waiting there for a while to get one. Tentacruel jump scare. But yeah. You can also use the honey that you get from earlier. Um, to get an immediate encounter. Although I usually prefer to save it for later. Actually, no, it doesn't matter because you can't use it later. But yeah. Alright, so this is Rival 4? Yeah, 4. Rival 4 is pretty straightforward. There's really nothing that can go wrong. It's just psychic, 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 psychic. I guess this Teravi has Quick Claw, so it could double team and you could miss. Oh, Heracross. I haven't seen Heracross since Crystal. Ooh. What do you mean you've run this game? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like in any other game since okay. Crystal. <laughs> That's fair. To be fair, you also run like too much Let's Go, so. We're gonna be very yeah, bound to just the Kanto decks. Joto win, please. Yes, it's never gonna happen. That would be the greatest gift in the world. Mega Heracross. Honestly, just release it, release Let's Go Johto, and then just close down the Pokemon Company, because I'll never <laughs> need to release another game. No, because then we'll want Let's Go Hoenn. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty sick, actually. <laughs> I think any Let's Go game, it, I mean, it depends, It'll I think. It'll never happen. Because, like, they could easily just make another Let's Go game that doesn't have a gym requirement like Koga. And yeah, then, that's true. Well, then, and then it's like, AOP. whatever. I guess it could still do AOP, yeah. AOP would be fun. Um, imagine AOP on with like 200-something oh, pokes. That would be so good in Johto and Kanto. <laughs> it would be, be so long. It would be so much fun, though. I guess you could get Tratini uh, more easily. That's probably true, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can get Tratini a lot more, a lot easier in in Johto, I think. Alright, shoutouts to this Black Belt, which is a fight that you can just wipe on. Doesn't, um, like, everything in this gym have Sturdy as well? I don't think everything has, but some of them do, yeah. But not all of them. More, uh, more than so, any other place in the run. Yeah, this... yeah, probably. This Tilix uh, has Iron Tail, which deals a lot of damage, can kill you, can straight up one-shot you, so... Very bad news. Uh... Okay, uh, I forgot something. I was supposed to do this. Oops, no. Okay, there we go. All item. We have to heal. We can use a super weapon again. And we have to equip the choice packs. And that's it. So now we're spec. Forgetting to switch the glasses here can also destroy your run. Yep. Uh, I feel like I've done There's that. There's just so many. So <laughs> many little things. So many little things if you just forget to do it, it's just over. Alright, so in this one, just Shadow Ball. Okay, missed input, interesting. Oh, uh, the Steelix is a range. Uh, actually, um, I always say this when I get to this fight. I don't think it's a range anymore because I think I'm a higher level than what I would normally be here on any percent. So 
Probably not a range anymore. Definitely not a range to crit. I'm actually surprised that one doesn't have sturdy. Yeah. Because the first one does, I think. The do the uh I don't remember. Does it? Yeah, I think it does. Um that one does. Yeah, I think it's it's why it's a two shot, because it's Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because it has sturdy. The Onyx and the Steel and yeah, the the Onyx and the Steelix that we have coming up. This one is just two Onyxes, but the next one is Onyx and Steelix. None of them has sturdy. I always like this guy's stance whenever you... So I guess it's really just the first fight that has sturdy, and then Byron has sturdy on people. So it's actually not that bad. Yeah, I actually didn't calc many of the ranges, or I didn't recalc many of the ranges. Um, but a lot of the stuff that is a range is either a better range or a guaranteed range. Because we are over level um, compared to an any percent run, just from doing the extra trainers. You're normally gonna be teaching roleplay, or you're, you're gonna be skipping roleplay. You're gonna be trying to learn roleplay um, during Byron. Um, but here we get it here. Three fights before, so. This one, you can do Shadow Ball twice, but it is usually a range. I don't know if it's a range. Uh, it's usually a range on Steelix um, on any percent. I don't know if it's still a range here. But I'm just gonna go with Crab Mount just to save. I don't think you can die to it if you miss though, but yeah, it's just annoying. Now it's time for everyone's favorite steel type, the Zoomeril. This game is very weird. With the types and the Pokemon that is they the use. Is the still type? It is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is most certainly not. <laughs> I was like, I was like, did I forget something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they did, but um, I guess at some point they were like, we can't just put another Onyx here or another Steelix. We've done it too much already. We need something else. And they just put it as a move. Yeah, it's uh, like uh, <laughs> it's like in Gen two, the Steel Gym is like no trainers and only three Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's weird. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of weird stuff like this uh, throughout the entire game. Okay, we're gonna revive the Monferno, and that's it. Well, this fight is slightly different than any percent. On any percent, you would be using Stealth Rock strats. Uh, which means he would be leaving Monferno actually here. Um, and using. He would basically taunt to prevent Trick Room. Uh, and then he would Stealth Rock and then he would try to kill it with Flamethrower. You maybe would have to taunt um, again in the meantime. And then he would basically use the Stealth Rock to break Sturdy on the last two pokes. This fight is slightly more scary like this. Um, we're just gonna take out the Bronzer immediately. Then gonna switch to Monferno. Monferno is gonna mock punch the Steelix to break sturdy. Then we're gonna finish it off with Kadabra. And then the problem is the Bastiodon. We're gonna have to use an X Defender. Um, we're gonna have to dodge a couple of crits. So it is not ideal. You would be better off with, because with stealth rock strats you basically only have to dodge one crit I think. Um you do the XX special but that's it. So yeah X defend. No I messed up. Am I dead? I should be dead right? Okay I'm not. Fine. I'm surprised I didn't die. I forgot I started setting up before <laughs> finishing up this is not the first time it happened. I'm surprised it didn't just Killed uh, me. I've gotten I've gotten wiped on this fight before. It should have killed me there. It should have just gone for like earthquake or whatever. Um. Anyway, uh, I guess we're healing this. 
Not really sure what we should be doing here. I guess we heal, then maybe Grasna? Yeah, I think that's the play. And then X special. Well, we're gonna have to heal again, I think. Yeah, we have to heal again. A little unfortunate, but as long as we don't get crit, we should be fine. Okay. Don't crit me. Okay. Should be fine now. Okay, a little awkward, but I'm glad I didn't die at least. It's not the first time it happens. Sometimes you can start thinking about the setup and you forget that you actually have to finish off the Skillix. But luckily I didn't die with the Gyro Ball. I was actually about to reset and I was like, wait, Gyro Ball? Maybe that doesn't kill? <laughs> and it didn't. I, uh, I looked up the Steel-type gym in Gen 2. Okay. And there's only two different Pokemon. Jasmine has two Magnemites, which are retconned Steel-types, and a Steelix. <laughs> so... <laughs> yep. So in the first game with Steel-types, there was, like, nothing. <laughs> We're testing them out still. I yeah. don't know. Uh, this is all just like story yep. cutscene stuff now, right? Oh, the Galarian Meowth is a steel type? Yep. Interesting. There's only 14 Pokemon that are only Steel type. And a Lolan Sandshrew is Steel type? Oh my god, I had no idea. I yep. thought it was just ice. You can get it on. Let's go, I think. Yeah, I, I always thought it was just an ice, an ice type. Yeah. That's really cool, actually. Uh Oh, I forgot something. It's fine. Okay. Gonna have a bit of a weird uh, menu here. Okay. It's fine. We're gonna have to take a, a bit of a run later. That's okay. Uh, wait, no. JT learns oh, random Pokemon facts. <laughs> you have to go to the Iron Island. I'm basically useless after Gen 3. I mean, <laughs> there's not much. Can't use a lasso anymore in gyms. What do you mean? Uh, Uh, yes, this was on. This is a remake of uh, Diamond and Pearl uh, from the 3DS. Uh, Diamond and Pearl were on DS. Oh, the DS. Right yeah, yeah. See, even that, I don't even know. After Gen 3, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the Max Ether there. Um, we unfortunately super repelled a little too late. Um, ooh, I'm actually concerned about something here. Okay, hopefully we're fine. <laughs> you know, start out here. Don't, don't sweep uh... attack, please. I don't know, I think it. I think this thing has sweep attack. Uh, okay. Oh, rip. It's okay. Do you come to this place That's just why we have auto save. Lucario? I should have healed. I've actually ne never died to quick attack there. Um, I wasn't sure if it had it though. Don't remember. But I guess it do. It does. And yeah, quick attack is kind of... For most Pokemon it would be fine. On that health. But yeah, Kadabra is not exactly the bulkiest. Is this place just for the Riolu? Whoops. Or do you even get Riolu here? Uh, no, we don't get... Oh, I mean, you could get... get that, that's where you would get Riolo, uh, but no, we don't. Oh, is it in a fight later or something? Uh, yeah, you would have to go through this entire thing 
which involves like a, a little bit of an expedition with like uh, okay. another trainer where you do like double fights, just like the forest thing. Um, and then at the end, they give you a real you. But we're not gonna do that. We just go here for the cherim, basically. But I believe right, you can't really find the cherim in any other place, um, which is why we have to go so far off track to just find one. Yeah, Morphono is dead as well, so we, like I couldn't even like revive there. I would have just wiped there with the quick attack. So, but that's where autosave comes in handy. That's I don't know nice if I've even have. seen this Pokemon before. <laughs> <laughs> Cherim. Yeah, I don't think I've even seen Cherim before. Okay. All right. Finally, change the battle style back to that. Uh, we have to eat her psychic, and we have to teach that something. Uh, where is it? There it is. Dazzling Gleam is a very good move. It's a spread move as well, uh, which is gonna help with a lot of the double fight. Uh, let's get this over This is so much better than Let's Go. I don't know about that. Oh really? I th I think it's I think it's way better. Like it's not good, but it's <laughs> I think it's way better. <laughs> Oops. Cape rope doesn't work in gyms. I don't think so. It doesn't work in buildings. Can't say better than let's go while. Yeah, escape rope doesn't work screen. in gyms. Actually, kind of fair. So true, Eddie. I don't know that escape rope has ever worked in buildings. Yeah. It works in the mansion, but I, in, in, in Kanto, but I don't think that's really. It works in tower building. here as well. And in tower in, in Let's Go as well. Worked in some buildings in Gen 1, okay. That's pretty interesting. And then sometimes Oak is just like, bruh, stop. Uh, okay. I wasn't super safe, but that's okay. Blades Gym, Sabrina's Gym, Sulco. That's, that's interesting. Gen 1 is kind of a mess, though. <laughs> oh, true. I mean, actual Gen 1, not... not Bill's house? Game. You can escape from kind of Bill's movie. house? Okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Gen, Gen 1 is held together by, like, duct tape and string. Would it be valid to use an escape rope for ditch build purposes? <laughs> I know it's slower, I know it's slower. <laughs> Does it work in all those places in Let's Go, or just or just like yellow, blue, red? Yeah, maybe it only works for. Yeah. Oh, just Gen One. Okay. Gen 1. Okay, yeah, that makes that makes sense actually. Yep. <laughs> I adore Gen One, but it is a disaster. Uh, I mean, there are otherwise. some pretty broken things you can do in the, the later game. Like, being able to go to the box, the Pokemon box in Let's Go is just everywhere, like, even in the Elite Four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't do it in this game. Um, not even in gyms, so... You escape from build to Cerulean Center, that would be huge in... in Let's Go. Oh, <laughs> uh, not this one. This is the one. Shoutouts to Rock Climb being in the middle of nowhere. Just a normal Pokeball again. Very easy to miss. Did they really bring you back to the center? I forgot about that. I, I forgot guess. what this vision is. I think I was fine though. I don't think his vision is that long. Escape 
from build to cerulean center, that would be so good for let's yeah, go. Let's save like a full minute almost. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. I've always wanted to do a gym owner. But when I tried to learn it, it was like during the D-sum days, and I just could not figure it out. Ooh, okay. And then I never went back after people stopped using D-sum. I don't know if I could play it again. I don't know. The Gen 1 and Gen 2 games have just... I don't think they have aged that well <laughs> compared to the others. I don't know, I grew up with Gen 1, so... I mean, I also grew up with all of those, but... Uh, wait, hold on, what am I doing? I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, I need to swap first, and then I do the wise classes. Wait, what am I doing, dude? Can I... Here we go. Jesus Christ. Um... Okay. Really missed my notes there. That's okay. Alright, we go to Pastoria, which is different. Uh, normally we would go to... Veilstone there. But we're not gonna do that. Just yet. It's a very good scuff setup, Iron. I'm also doing tech for the run, by the way. Thank you for the good luck. Oh my god. There we go. Okay, we got a rare candy and an ether there. Um, I'm just looking up stuff about escape ropes in general right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll pay more attention to the run. <laughs> right. And now we have to go through this detour to get one extra Pokemon. We're not gonna catch it. Go in the water. Yeah, that was the best feature. All right, we gotta drop the repel, and now uh, we're hoping to find a whooper, not a quagsire, which you can also find here. It is a little unfortunate sometimes. It right takes now. a while. You don't even know where I am. I'm to the left yeah, of Pastoria. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. Dude! Like a 10% or something. Classic. We see plenty of Quagsires. They're actually pretty... Pretty dangerous in this run. We need a Whooper. You can actually find a Whooper as well on the grass to the right, but it's not um, as likely. Because there's a lot of other things that can spawn there. There we go. Not the greatest whooper, but that's okay. Nice whooper is awesome. There's not really a fight that you can do to find a whooper that's like convenient. Okay, now we do this fight. Random Fisher. Um, it also works nicely like with this fight because you got the Goldeen and the Barbo. Oh, Goldeen. Okay. This is so interesting, all the like detours you have to take to get to fill out the Pokédex. Yeah. Alright. Um, now we're gonna go to Veilstone and do the actual, what you would normally do after getting to Snow Point. Gonna go down here. Uh, we actually have another extra fight that we do here, which is very interesting. Because you, you go through this route so many times, and now we decide to fight uh, this trainer. Uh, we do have to super repel. Uh, 
Oh, uh, it's this one. Almost forgot. I've actually you forgotten this about this. Because of PP management before. Well, no, I mean, before you you had the problem with. Um, Oh, the experience, right. Experience, okay. yeah, so you can't really... Like, you could probably... Maybe you could try and route... It's really hard to route around it, like, it's tight enough already. So you can't really route around this. Um, you just have to do it later. And it's not like you're wasting time doing it later, because you're, you're right. going through here anyway. Um, Alright. Yeah, I remember always being so stressed out on this route just because movement is so difficult on the bike. It wasn't the greatest, but that's fine. Uh, we do have the Pokech. I need to watch out for that. This one doesn't see me. I'm always like on down. Okay. Whatever. Okay, 35. So odd 35. Um, I did not save for this fight, it shouldn't be a problem. This fight is usually pretty free. Uh, the Bronzer is a range, but I don't think it's a range on this category because we are a higher level, I think. I think we are, yeah. We should be. The thing about being a higher level is that it is true that you are doing more um, trainers, but certain menus are also... Like, we're not using as many candies, for example, in certain sections because of it, because we are supposed to be at a level. So at some point, it kind of evens out uh, anyway. But I think we are still overleveled here. I almost accidentally used that. That's fine. Okay. Um, so you'll notice the full catch was open, and it has the step counter. This is so I can know when the next repel, or the next super repel, is going to... That's the wrong move. Should be fine. Uh, okay. Uh, we also get a Mount Heal now. This is convenient. So there is a trick that you can do. Uh, we technically don't consider it a glitch, or at least not a glitch in the sense that it would invalidate a run. Uh, it's something that we allow in this category. I forgot to... I, this is another classic example of a menu that you cannot miss. You need to switch. Um, you need to have choice packs on this fight, on this next, like the upcoming fight, because otherwise you're not going to kill everything. Very, very important that you don't forget that. We're gonna get the mom heal, which is really nice. It's also really fast with music off. Now we're gonna go up. So we need the step counter to know exactly when the super repel is gonna end. Because we're gonna do that to do a little trick uh, in Candice's gym. We basically get to Candice really fast. Yeah. So another fight, another random fight that can just destroy you. It's not even like a commander or anything, it's just a couple of grunts. If one of them crits you, you are dead. You don't necessarily wipe because you can still bring it back, but it's very bad news. Basically, a few of these folks have Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch deals a lot of damage here, and if it crits, it just kills you. I hate that all the Pokemon games have different menu logic. Yeah, I've noticed that. It's, it's a little just, bit, it's, 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 it's like you have to. And let's go, it always game. resets basically. And in this one, it stays on. It's like, it kind of stays on some things, bag. but not on all of them. It's weird. <laughs> or like where you are in the bag stays in this yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're gonna heal here. Hopefully... Oh yeah, and it stays on bag if you use the bag. That's... Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, there's so 
There's so many weird inconsistencies between how like all the menus and stuff work. Etiquette, I feel you. I definitely feel that. <laughs> listen, I I... I said the same thing two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> I got listen, I got I don't know if I, I can probably convince you to not do it. I got high roll mud shot on wake. So I died because of it. I'm thinking about the Scyther all the way. I might do um, that. Wait, do I? I have to. Oh my god. Oh, I forgot to. Very important that you deposit Monferno a lot more than this category. Because. Because you're, you're, you're doing like a lot more fights, um, and can, and like Monferno will be alive for some part of it. It's more likely to like if you if you keep it in the party as you would normally do, or the same amount as um, as an any percent run, um, it would evolve to Infernape, which is something you want to avoid. Okay, this is really the only thing that can go wrong with this fight. There is an alternate strat that is what. You usually do on any percent. I just ended up doing it like this. Uh, it kind of works. The alternate strat is to just rely more on like calcium. Um, I basically have a bit of um, a good range on on both Pirelli and Dronter, which in this case it's not because I'm plus two. Dapper Ultimate is a bad idea. Is it basically just like a different Kadabra? Yeah, it would have to be a different Kadabra, right? Can't really use Kaza. Or can can you like route it in a way that you still I don't think so. I don't think it's possible. Alright. You have to heal here. Every time I say I want to run this game again, I, I come back and get like halfway through a D-Rust and then <laughs> just end up back on Let's Go. Every single time. I've done it like five times. Alright, odd 35 is what we're looking for. We do have to take a bit of a uh, job here. 10 steps should be fine. Did you know how this was discovered? Is this used in the old, in the in the original? This specific trick? Yeah, this trick with. Uh, the, I don't think so. No. The steps. I mean, this is this seems something very specific to BDSP. It's just classic BDSP, to be honest. All right, here's <laughs> Candice. The hair in the Pokemon universe just ignores the laws of physics. <laughs> That's still <so> true. <laughs> Alright, um, Avalanche is nice. It's not too bad. Whoops. Okay, so we are outsped by the Sneasel here. However, the Sneasel usually goes for Avalanche, which is a minus priority move, so we just kill it immediately anyway. It can use something else, and I actually had it the other day, for the first time ever I think, I had never seen it. Uh, it used Hone Claws. And... It's actually interesting, etiquette in chat. Uh, Etiquette's notes literally say something along the lines of it likes to go for minus priority moves. Uh, I'm sorry if you die or something like that. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it likes to go for Avalanche there. Um, even though it has other. I think it has Dig as well.
I always, for some reason, read that Pokemon's name is Obama Snow. Obama Snow. I don't know why. Every time it comes out, I'm like, oh, Obama Snow. Yeah, that's that's the note for Medicut's notes. Sorry if you die. I don't think anyone has died though, so we good. Yeah, I've never died to that. Yeah, I mean the the other day it used something else, but it was Honeclaw, so it didn't really matter. Oh, interesting. What did it use when it didn't um, go for Avalanche? It got big. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's so scuffed. There are a few fights where it's like... There, there are a few things in this game where it's like... It feels like it's always gonna be something. But there is like the very, very slim possibility that it doesn't. Like another one that I know is Mars Per Ugly. Going for... Um, what's it called? Fake Out Turn 1. I have seen it go for Tackle instead of Fake Out. Which is very hard to see. Yeah, Cyrus 2 also has... and that's even more unfortunate. Cyrus 2 is one of those fights where it literally has to go perfectly. That's the, fight the slightest deviation and you're done. <laughs> I missed a Honchkrow range in that fight because yeah. the Dabber didn't kill Rosalia. Because he didn't kill the Rosalia. <laughs> That's actually so sad. <laughs> it's so stupid. This game, this is Because really it's also like the only time player. you've done it. And on the, the only time you've actually didn't... The only time you had the range, you miss it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. It's absurd. So fun fact about this fight, since I did it in the chat, if you die here, you go back to Mom. And you can die here if you <laughs> click the wrong move. <laughs> Alright. Shoutouts to Echi for the spinner. Every time I do a D rest, I feel like this place is going to be a problem, and then it somehow never is, like fighting my way through it. This place is usually fine, yeah. It's I don't like know. The muscle memory just comes back so quickly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's not really a lot that can go wrong in this area. Fun fact, you can skip this trainer in the original game because you can go on top of the shares. But in this game, they don't allow you to go on top of the shares. But they allow you in left field, so I don't know. That one is not is a trainer, a... by the way. Oh, I, I didn't know that's not a trainer. <laughs> I feel like I've waited for that mm, spin before. That one is also not a trainer. <laughs> is, there a, is there a reason for the step counter to still be up? Are you still tracking? Uh, no. I just oh, okay. forgot. I wasn't sure if there was another... Yeah, I usually keep it up until I drop the repel, basically. 
Just so I know when the, when to drop, when I'm about to drop the rappel so I can do the bike thing of switching the gears just before it drops. And then I usually take it off. Come on. Alright. We haven't gotten any crazy long spinners yet. Uh, that is true, yeah, the spinners have been okay. They've been relatively quick. I feel like there's been a couple where I've sat for like a full minute. Oh yeah, for sure. Because even if you're trying to do like the trick of trying to manipulate them to move or to turn towards you, they can still take forever. Um, right. And then they can stay looking at you as well forever, even if you're not moving. So it's not great. We're gonna withdraw Monferno now. Because we have another double fight coming in. And then we're gonna deposit it again, just so it doesn't evolve into... into Infernape. I almost forgot. That would've been tragic. So just do anything. Okay, yeah, basically have uh, one Ferno here just to heal you. And you don't actually need to do any setup on this one. But yeah, a lot of these Pokemon have Sucker Punch, so you kind of want to have something to heal. But yeah, this part is pretty dull. There's not really much going on. We're gonna have Cyrus 1 coming up, which is also not really that eventful. Then afterwards, we're actually gonna take a bit of a detour again to fight an extra trainer. And again, go into a different area. Yeah, this part is kind of just like going through the motions again, like, like getting through Wake's yeah. Gym. They should have, like, to tried to here. spread out some of the craziness of the first hour and a half throughout the run, rather than having everything, like, at the beginning. Yeah, everything is packed in at the beginning. Right. Gonna take an extra teleporter pad here to get a couple of extra items as well. One of them is an elixir and the other one is a rare candy. This is another one that you don't really do many percent these days. You can just get those. Alright. I didn't really heal or save, but that's okay. If we die, we'll go back to mom, that's fine. <laughs> Bob, Cyrus, Another thing you can do, um, which is pretty interesting, I've never done it. If you can actually go to Mount Coronet before you fight um, Cyrus here, but one of the doors is like closed. It's pretty funny. You play it. Yeah, this fight is pretty straightforward. I believe you have like speed tie on the sneasel. Don't remember. I think you do.
Take out the claws. Alright. So that's size one. Is there Get ever the like a this? time? Is there ever like a time in this run where you're just going to collect Pokemon for the Pokedex, like for for an extended amount of time, or is it pretty well like? No, it is the, mostly the just on the way. Oh, that's that's really nice actually. Yeah, so there's no extra stuff at the end or anything like that. Uh, you do have to do quite a few detours, and some of them are they're like pretty extended. Um. Like the one for the Whooper, for example, is one that's like pretty far away from everything else, but... Right. And the next one that we're about to do is also pretty far away from everything else, but... I mean, it's just... it's just a way to do it, I guess. There's probably other ways to do it, it's just... These feel pretty consistent. Because another thing is also, like... Finding wild Pokémon is not always that easy. Because there's yeah. other stuff that can spawn. If it's a trainer, it's guaranteed. It's also good experience sometimes. Oh. Well, at least you don't have to spend like an hour at the end of the run just running around, uh, yeah. fighting random trainers and filling out the rest of the. Or evolving <laughs> Pokemon or whatever, yeah. like diploma. I actually got that vibe from like, Blue Magma's run earlier today. Because the last hour was just evolving pokes, and it's just like Diploma, oh, basically. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What was it, the catch em all catch Sapphire? Catch-em-all Sapphire. Um, oh my god. It's yeah. slightly <laughs> different because it's not, like, traits, but... It's a, it's a lot of Pokemon. It's more or less the same feeling. Just have to wait there until the end. A little anticlimactic, I'd say. If you've done this run, like, enough, it doesn't feel like that good, this part. Um, I think the best part of this run is definitely round 2 and round 3. The, t the detours are like nice, but obviously like we're still doing much of the any percent anyway. So if you've done this run a lot, then it's not really going to feel that, that, like, that much of a novelty, I guess. Um, wait, what am I doing? I have to super repel. Now we go to Orberg. Normally you would go up and into Mount Pernet, but before that, we are gonna take a little bit of a detour here. We have to watch out for these trainers here. You can sometimes forget that you actually didn't fight them. Okay, we're gonna go here, all the way down. And we're gonna go straight down. Surf, and then we have a trainer here that has a Riolu, a Raptor, and a Graveler. Oh, nice, okay. And you do it for that Riolu, basically. And I think the Graveler, I don't think you see a Graveler anywhere else, which is also kind of weird. Graveler seems like such a common poke. can also take quite a bit of damage on this fight, so you're usually going to have to heal um, afterwards. Because you can get quick attack from this, tap from this Raptor, you, can, uh, you also have to get through Sturdy on Graveler, which means he gets a move, so it's a little awkward sometimes. How many Pokemon are in the Pokédex in this game? Uh, I want to say it's around 150. Oh, okay, that's not that's not too many. Like the requirement for the pump three is 150. Uh, yeah. It's not well, too bad. Well, this is like it's it's the the Sino decks, not the the national decks. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. The Sino decks. You don't you don't you don't have to have the nat national decks pulled out for round three. Yeah. Just the Sino uh, what decks. What am I doing? Okay. 
You basically you need <laughs> that to. That looks really so funny. <laughs> the actual requirement is you need to have the national decks um, to be able to do round two, because there are Pokemon from the national decks in round two. Um, oh. And to get the, the national decks, um, you have to f register everyone in the Sinnoh decks. Oh, okay. But and you don't actually, have to complete the national decks, right? You don't have to complete the national decks, no. Oh, okay. Otherwise, that would be silly. <laughs> That's a lot of books. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be insane. Another thing worth noting is that a pull team is actually kind of locked um, until you get the national decks. Because there are, again, Pokemon that are from the national decks will show up there. Um, so if you go to like the first island in the post game, um, you are actually blocked from leaving the first town until you complete the national decks. Wow, that's so interesting that the game like stops you from seeing any Pokemon that aren't in the yeah in the regional decks until you get the national decks. That's 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 really cool, actually. I didn't know that. Yeah. I always like the movement in that way. You just go like around in a circle in a little loop. Yeah. So we're gonna get a max revive here. Um, normally on an eight percent run, you get a revivaler, which is very important for Cyrus two coming up. Um, since we are so bad on money, and the revival herb is like super expensive, uh, we're not gonna get that. Uh, we didn't get that. So we're getting a uh, max revive instead, which is usually like a backup. I'm also getting a full heal here, um, because we don't have a lot of um, full heals. So it's just a little bit of an extra safety. Um, that full heal actually I didn't know about until one of my runs where I had a repel wear off exactly in that spot and while I was matching, I just randomly picked up the full heal. <laughs> Oops, what am I doing? Come on. There we go. Alright. Catching a bunch of extra items. Gonna get one more rare candy here. another section of just fights yeah to get just a few fights fight. now um the calm before the storm really because we have mars and jupiter coming up or m and j although these days i usually end up calling them j and j because i'm so used to lights for these days <laughs> Mars and Jupiter is not, like, it's a fight that you can lose a lot of time in. It's not a fight that is very easy to, like, literally lose to, like, wipe. But you can lose a lot of time there. Um, it's basically just like Arthur annoying. or any other 2P fight. I remember fight. being annoying, but I don't remember it being bad. Yeah, it's annoying. It's just not... I'm not too worried about it. I'm more worried about Cyrus. Because Cyrus, so we're gonna have to fight Mars and Jupiter and then Cyrus back to back without saving. Uh, so if you die on Cyrus, you have to do Mars and Jupiter again, uh, which sucks. And you have to watch like a few extra cutscenes again and all that, so. We do not want Cyrus to, to be a bully. Um, Cyrus is a fight that is actually very consistent usually. Uh, because it has to be like you, you need it to go exact in, a, in an exact way um, in order for it to work. The slightest deviation usually means you're gonna die. Um, yeah, it's one of those fights. Luckily, it's not really like that common, but yeah, it is pretty bad because if you die, then it is 
it's especially bad for marathons. Like, it's usually pretty hard to come up with like a reasonable estimate for BDSP because of it. Because if you die twice on Cyrus, for example, that's like 16 minutes you're wasting. <laughs> and I have died to Cyrus too uh, on one of my on my previous PB of this category, actually. Which is the only reason I actually PB'd a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I was super rusty, losing time every split, but then I just randomly won like 8 minutes because <laughs> my PP died to Cyrus. Was that the turbo run you did? Or was it, was yeah, it uh, no. Um, just Elite for Round 3, I did a run like 2 weeks ago oh, or okay. something. Just to prep. Alright. Very important that we withdraw the Monferno here. We need it for this upcoming fight. And a fun fact about this is that we've sort of been using Monferno mostly to just um, use X items or heal us. But actually in this fight, Monferno is actually going to deal damage and kill something. Uh, which is very interesting because it's basically just a level 30 poke at this point. Um, hasn't really been used in such a long time. But it's still going to be useful here against the Dust Tox. Because he doesn't leave and then Flamethrower. The Dust Tox as Protect is a little awkward. Uh, especially if it uses it twice and, and hits twice. Because it can ruin your PP uh, for Dazzling Gleam. So definitely you don't want to see that. And yeah, now we just heal. Um, if I need to heal, I don't think I need to. I'm not gonna heal that because I'm gonna get Circle Punch yeah. anyway. Okay, maybe not. Okay, I should have healed then. Whatever. I was high enough at HP that I could take a Sucker Punch, and I felt like I would be taking a Sucker Punch, so I just went for it. It's okay though, I need to menu anyway, so it's fine. I can just heal then. Yeah, first cutscene. The music tool actually works on all these cutscenes. Um, it should produce like the correct song on all the parts. It may not be absolutely perfect, but it'll mostly work. Fun fact: Pure Pillar is mirrored on. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Same goes for the originals. The columns here are not actually in the same spots in both games. Oh, really? Yeah, and the reason I know this is because when I implemented the tool, uh, it worked <laughs> on my end, and then Etiquette goes in Shining Pearl, and it doesn't work. And I was like, how did it not work? And I went back and I noticed, oh, the column is in the wrong place. Wow, that's, that's so <laughs> It was so funny. <laughs> Like it's just it's just flipped to the other side. Yeah. Um okay, not that. So yeah, I'm gonna use two rare candies. Oh, that's such an interesting thing that like nobody would ever notice except for in that very specific situation. Uh yeah. It is pretty funny. Um and actually in platinum is also different. Um there's a different disposition for for Platinum Spear, Spear Pillow. So that game didn't get a remix. So. Alright, Mars and Jupiter. Um, really bad fight again because we have a Munchlux next to us. And there's a lot of other pokes that could be here. And actually it would be better if there were no pokes at all. <laughs> If this was just a one on two, it would be much easier. Um, unfortunately, because actually, like the bronzers are pretty good Pokemon to set up on. Uh, did it just confuse me? Okay, no, it was Munchlax. We're good. Um, okay, now I'm confused. That's interesting. Um. Where is it? There it is. And a full restore. 
This is a weird fight so far. Uh, they're targeting the, the Munchlax a lot more than they normally do. They usually just focus on... Okay, this is good. They usually just focus on the Kadabra. So you want to basically get rid of the right side first, and then the left side. The problem is the Munchlax is going to keep con like attacking the left side, which is not ideal, because at some point you may get other Pokémon too. Because at some point the Bronzer will die, um, and other Pokémon will come out. And while the Bronzer is still here, it's not really much of a threat, but the other Pokémon that will come out will be much more of a threat, so you want to make sure that you get rid of all the Pokémon on the right first, and then do the same thing on the left. And this is... okay. It should still be fine, uh, as long as I don't get crit here. Uh, but I should still go for the Psychic here on probably. And then I think... I probably heal. I'm gonna heal now. Uh, where is... Sure, I'll use Eye Propulsion, why not? Okay, Body Slam. No Para. And yeah, the fight should be good from here. That was a pretty decent fight. Um, Kadabra didn't die, which is nice. Uh, it's actually pretty common, at least for me, for Kadabra to die. Which is still, like, technically fine. You can just revive it. You can finish the fight sometimes with Monferno as well. Um, there are a lot of random things that can happen. The... Berry here can also withdraw Pokémon, for example. Uh, the same goes for M&J. M&J can sometimes withdraw I've the Bronzers randomly withdraw or something. something. Sorry, what? I've, ne I've never seen Barry withdraw something there. Oh, it. I, I've seen it multiple <laughs> times. Um, That's so weird. One I've always, I've only seen once is the, like Mars and Jupiter withdrawing one of the Bronzers. That's so weird. That one is very weird, and I saw that in a marathon. <laughs> it's very weird. Okay, double fights. In Pokemon is just awful. And, like whenever you have a partner, they always suck. I don't know which one is worse, if it's the Munchlax or the Cubone in Let's Go. <laughs> but they both suck. I don't know, the Cubone is pretty bad. <laughs> Their faces. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time for Chibi Cyrus. We do get healed between the fights, so at least there's that. Imagine if we weren't healed, that would be. Oh yeah, that would be tough. All right. Hopefully it goes well. The fight has to go a very specific way, so we have a guaranteed range here on Honshiro. Um This is the one that JT missed because he <laughs> yeah. missed an AV so dumb. from like, not killing a Pokemon early in the run. And then ended up having a 15 and 16, which sucks. You need to immediately kill the Honshiro because the Honshiro has a 100% critical hit uh, chance. And this stems from a combination of like the item that it has, the ability and all that stuff, and uh, the moves that it has. So yeah, we are supposed to die here, this is like expected. You don't want to crit the Gyarados there, because then it could be like in heal range. Now, we have to be very, very careful. Max revive. This is why we need a max revive for the revival oh, can you can you accidentally use it on the on the wrong Pokemon in this yes. game as well? Oh, that's so stupid. I have done it before. There's no, this has no effect. It is miserable. Just waste a turn. And then we finish with Psyshock. Okay, good. So far, the Gyarados can also withdraw there sometimes <laughs> on any of those turns. 
Just like extremely cursed. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully we go for Tailwind here. That's good. Okay. So there is only one more thing that can go wrong, which is a crit. So as long as we don't get crits from the Weavile, we're good. There's so many things that go wrong in this fight. <laughs> so we're gonna act special on the Weavile. If it goes for Dig, we just go immediately. Um, if it goes for Pluck, we need to act defend. It usually goes for Pluck. Okay, goes for Dig, interesting. Yeah, it outspeeds us. We're good, okay. Thank God. Alright, we're done with Cyrus. We didn't die to Cyrus, which is really good. good so that's pretty much how this fight has to go. If it goes any other way, it's usually a death. <laughs> and yeah, we're finally gonna catch Dialga. And you actually I have like a pretty Dialga fun is... couple oh, seconds coming up. Yeah, yeah go ahead, sorry. I, I I like that Dialga is massive, and then once you once you like catch it and it's following you around, it's tiny. Yeah. There is a mod. Um, there's a lot of mods for this game. Um, and one of them actually gives you true size Pokemon. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah, there is one. That's awesome. Pretty cool. I don't know how true it is. I don't know if it's actually. Get a yeah. lord like take. I don't know if it's city. actually to scale, um, but yeah. All right, so we have a bit of an interesting section now, um, because we have to do another detour to go fight something pretty interesting. All right. Um, so we have to equip the matrix. Okay, hold on. I forgot. First things first. We don't need the Monferno anymore. Give a metronome to Dialga. Um, we should heal. Actually, didn't need to heal. That's okay. Uh, and then escape room. Didn't need to heal because I'm actually gonna go from the bottom here. I guess I could go from up. I don't think there's any reason at this point to do it like this. Whatever. I'll just do it like this. Because there's nothing really I'm getting here. I guess it's maybe PP management because of the extra fights. That might be why. Jesus Christ. Okay. There we go. Uh, yes, we still need the repel. We will drop it at some point, but not yet. Yeah, I think. Does she look right? No, she, she only looks down and left. Oh, okay. I forgot the thing. <laughs> I need to like. I'm guessing the reason was just PP management. To do it from here, that's okay though. All right, so we are doing a detour here. Uh, we were here earlier when Team Galactic were here and Lake Valor, but now the lake is actually oh, now there's water. okay. So there's actual water, and there is this little buddy here. Oh, I, that was, I thought that was the, the dialogue for the... <laughs> that that happens to me in Let's Go so often. Yeah. It's so it's so annoying how often it happens. Shoutouts to Azel. Like every run I have at least one of those. We're not going to catch it. Sorry, folks. Aw, uh, bad. Maybe someday I'll do a catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it'd be horrible in this game. <laughs> It would be for sure. All right, we do have to see everything, which includes all the lake mons. Uh, this is the only one we'll see before the um, T 
the Elite Four just because it's on the way basically to Sunny. I forget what the name of the town is. Sunnyside? I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna fight I, a random trainer here. Four bad ideas. I Would you be interested in Iron Man? We could do a diploma. I can't believe you haven't got Magikarp yet. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the Magikarp actually. Have I not seen a Magikarp yet? I don't think so. Okay. I know it's definitely Maybe, because yeah. of the Pinion. Be wrong, but... Um, and the Phoebus, I think. Both of those are things we don't really... Yeah, I don't know. I have thought about doing Sinodax AOP, yeah. The only thing is, so there's so there's actually an interesting thing. Um, I, I've thought about doing that, I've also thought about doing like a diploma, or a three-way diploma to get like the starters and all that stuff. Um... You can actually get all the starters after you have the National Axe. Because they will spawn in the underground. Oh, that's nice. But actually. at that point, like, it feels silly to catch all of them in the Sinnoh decks, but then have random stuff from the... the National Axe spawning there. You can also get the other uh, starters, like, from previous gens. You can actually catch a lot of Pokemon in the other round of this game. Do they spawn before you have the... Cinematics yeah, that's, the, that's the point. Like, you need the National Dex. Oh, okay. That's why it sucks. It would still, like, it would be... AOP would be pretty rough, though. It would take quite a while. Yeah, especially with the random encounters. Yeah, exactly. Imagine looking for for pincer or whatever, but having to run into every Pokemon to see if it's actually a pincer. <laughs> that would be so bad. That would be so cursed. It's like I remember fishing for Gatinis in in Yellow back in the day. Yeah. So awful. Quick balls in the underground makes water poke super easy. Probably, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should do it at some point. Oh, okay. <laughs> the movement. <laughs> Classic PTSP moment. So fun fact, um, when you look at this, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe when you look at these glasses, at these goggles, I mean, um, you are teleported briefly to the Pokemon, to, to like the beginning of the Pokemon, to not the Pokemon League, like the, um, the beginning of Victory Road. Because there is a category uh, in any percent no out of bounds. Uh, you know, it's one of those categories where you completely break the game with the glitches and all that stuff. You use Vantage Storage in that specific spot so that you can basically exit the game while you're inside the goggles, like when are you looking at the goggles, and then when you go back in, you're at the beginning of the... of Victory Road. And I believe, I'm getting the reason it works like that. So, if you look at the goggles, there's like the town indicator at the top left. It shows like Victory Road or whatever, or Pokemon League or something like that. Um, so I believe, I'm guessing, the reason is that they literally, they wanted to show that thing, to show where it was. And I guess the hacky way to do it was to just teleport the player while they're in the goggles to that spot. I'm guessing that's how it's implemented. I don't know. This gym is kind of weird. What's your favorite electric type? Because mine is Mr. Mine. Favorite electric type? 
I was gonna give a sincere answer, but <laughs> then you said Mr. Mime. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to go for an actual electric attack. Uh, I don't know. I like Pichu. Okay, that's fair. It's have cute. to think about it. I don't know. I, 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 I don't really even have a favorite Pokemon, so it'd be hard to, hard to pick. Not Umbreon. But... Oh yeah, yeah. I do like shiny. Ooh, Umbreon. maybe you're not that much of a fan. How could you forget maybe it? I'm not. Shiny Umbreon is my favorite electric type. Didin? Luxray is my favorite, for sure. Luxray is pretty sick. Yeah. Injuries of the So yeah, it, this is another instance of a, f of a place in the game where you have to fight a bunch of Pokemon that really shouldn't be here. Um, the electric, the electric type gym, but there's like a Mr. Mime, there's a Steelix, there's a Madisham. <laughs> The barrel, like half the Pokemon in here, are just not really. Yeah, that was not safe. That's okay. We are not we fighting the four fight, Pikachu's. Like, almost everybody in this gym too. Yeah. All right. The worst offender is definitely. Oh. <laughs> Kadabra's a pretty good psychic type. Or, er, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Type. <laughs> it is a pretty good psychic type. Doesn't belong here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what, what happened. Like, for some of them, I can understand. Like, I, it's understandable that Flint only has two Pokemon that are fire types. Because those are literally, like, the only fire types in the game. But. Although still, it amazes me that they went with, you know, um, an Elite Four member that is fire type when they only have two fire types in the game. <laughs> you could have just tried something else. Oh, did you just say there's only two fire types in this game? Yes. And one of them <laughs> is in my box right now. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Can you guess what the other fire type is? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Have, is it in the any percent run? Yes. Yes, uh, because you have to go oh. to Flint. And what I mean this, like, obviously I'm not counting like evolutions or stuff like that. I'm just saying like two Pokemon. They can evolve. So that's it. I have no idea. It's Flint lead on, on E4. I don't even remember who it is. <laughs> it's Ponyta. <laughs> oh, Ponyta. Okay. Slash Rapidash. But yeah, those are the only. So it's um, Ponyta slash Rapidash, and then Chimchar, Monferno, and. Oh, this Inferno. guy's Flint. Okay. Those are the only two fire types you have. In Platinum, they kind of fixed it. Uh, but yeah. On a Synodax, those are the only two. Flint is the guy that talked to you at the beginning of this town, right? Yeah. This one gets turned. all bummed out whenever you beat him. <laughs> that was scary. I need to be careful if I hit the spinner to heal, because I'm guessing the right shoot has quick attack. Any day now. <laughs> okay, pretty good. Uh, that spinner is one that I usually YOLO on the first pass. Because you have to pass him three times, and he saw just how much time I ended up just waiting for him to turn. Yeah. Alright, time for Volkner. Volkner is an interesting type, 
interesting fight. There's a couple of ways to do it. I like this way that I'm gonna do. It's a pretty interesting one because the right shoe basically always goes for Volt Switch. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just Psychic immediately. Raichu is gonna Volt Switch. And the Ambipom is gonna eat the, the Psychic. Oh, nice. And then, yeah, I have to speed on the next turn, where Raichu is again gonna Volt Switch. And I can't get crit. If I get crit, I die. Uh, This Raichu doesn't have any priority either, so we're fine at this point, we just have to Psychic everything. Uh, we do want to watch out for Dialga stats. The main thing I'm really looking for is the speed. Gonna get here. Okay, that's not great. I believe that is too slow for, for what we want. So we're gonna have to use a bunch of extra X speeds um, on a few fights. Which is not the end of the world, it's just it's a little slower. You basically wanna have the speed in the 90s. Easy right. fight. That's Volkner. Yeah, we do have Dialga, but we still keep using Kadabra just because Kadabra is still like pretty pretty useful. Can still destroy most of these things alone. So there's really no point in switching to Dialga yet. Um, on Shining Pearl, you would actually use Palkia for that specific fight on Volkner. Another way you can do that specific fight, so the other strat that you could do is basically just x in turn 1. Um, but ultimately it's more or less the same. We were talking about Jasmine hey, earlier, Jasmine. right? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about her a couple hours ago. <laughs> there she is. She Why is she here, actually? Real steel type. I think she said she's on like vacation or something, I can't remember. Mm, okay. Uh, super soft. Okay. Alright, this is an optional. We're supposed to. I always get... thought this water looked really nice. Yeah, the water looks really good on this game. Uh, not just in the overworld, but also actually in here. Um, oh, yeah, it does. It does also look really good here. The battle scenarios actually, in general, just look really good as well uh, in this game. The backgrounds. I really like the, uh, like the Cyrus background and the, and the commander backgrounds. Yeah. Oh, that dude's got some cool moves. <laughs> You're just <laughs> you're basically just learning about all of this now because you never pay attention. I think I've fought this guy before, but I, yeah, I'm usually looking at the notes whenever they do their animations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a required training, but this is in any percent. The other one yeah, wasn't, so the Luminion the is something rolled, that you wouldn't be. Rolled the ball across his arm like that. Looked cool. <laughs> all right, let's try not to hit an optional here. I hit an optional the other day. There is one optional that I basically just YOLO. Um, because it's usually fine. One of those cases where it's usually not gonna turn. It can sometimes turn, but if it does, it's not the end of the world as well, because it has like one Pokemon, I think. I used to know how to do this route, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm just sort of winging it. <laughs> yeah, this one is easy to forget. Okay, we're fine. That's the, the spinner oh, nice. that I usually just YOLO. 
But she doesn't usually turn. Uh, or at least she takes a very long while to turn usually. And she only has a gold up. It is a little unfortunate if you do hit her. Um, just from a PP management perspective. Because it, the PP management is kind of tight. Which it basically means you have to... Uh, use one of the PP items like earlier. This is a very long victory road. Yep. It's one of the worst, probably the worst section I think in the run. Um, because victory road is very involved. There's a lot of trainers that you have to fight to get through. It. And they're really kind of uneventful. Yeah, none of them are very, there's like one towards the end that's like a little weird, but like none of them are bad. Yeah. We're using Psyshock here because there's a Blissey here. Well, Psychic just wouldn't really do much. <laughs> we have to use Psyshock here. Alright. Got a max elixir as well. Okay. Are there any uh, extra trainers in? In no. Victory. Um, we're actually, oh, Rapidash. yeah, I There's think we're done. Types. There's a Rapid Dash again. We're actually done with um, extra trainers, like actual optionals. I think, yeah. Uh, we will fight some other trainers that are not in the elite for later, but those are required trainers just to get to certain points in the post game, basically. But right. in terms of like the decks, um, gold. Pretty much done, like, as long as we do round one, we're gonna have all 150 Pokemon. Unless I forgot wow, something. That's so, that's so clean. Yeah. It is pretty... It is like, much like the Koga like requirement. You will have to wait until you talk to, in this case, Professor Roke. Or Professor Rowan, I guess that's what's, what's his name. Yeah. Um, to actually see so, like... if you have 150. <laughs> Yeah, it just it works out so nicely though that like it's not it's not too different from the any percent route. It's kind of like everything is kind of along the way. There's a couple detours, but oh, no, it's not nothing here. nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's nothing too too crazy. It's pretty nice in that sense. It's like it works out so cleanly that it's just like you don't have to go out on any huge sections when you go search for Pokemon. Yep. Kind of all works out. We're almost at the good part. Yeah, just a few. I thought you talked to her again. <laughs> oh my god. The <laughs> movement is such a meme. Yeah, it's, it's rough here. What's weird to me is that, like, this feels like something that would be easily noticeable when you're testing the game. And that you would like immediately say, you know, we can't really do it like this. I'm surprised they actually released the game like this. Yeah. Because it's not like it's copied. it's not even like sometimes you could you could argue that, you know, we're speedrunners, okay, that's the critical hit. We're speedrunners, so you know, we're doing things at the limit, but that's like a very casual thing to do. Like you're playing casually and you notice the movement is yeah. just not right. Yeah, they basically just like did a one for one copy and then added uh, diagonal movement. Yeah. And the diagonal movement just makes it so rough sometimes. If 
funny that the Seraptor also crit me there. Um, even without the crit, that quick attack usually takes a lot of damage. Um, Cadaver really is just kind of frail. But yeah, as long as you outspeed most things, you're fine. Camp. Almost there. Yeah, I remember feeling like this was like kind of a slog to get through when I was running this. Because it's like, it's just, it's so late in the run. Like, that as well, me, yeah. Just let me through, please. You just want to end it and it's, yeah, it's way too long, I think. But it's not like the, like, Volkner's stream is also pretty uneventful for the most part. Even Volkner itself, you can die, but it's usually going to be fine. Yeah, it's like, not really a big deal at all. <laughs> There's that that gym and then straight into this is just like yeah. Just let me get to the E4, please. All right, so you can actually, if you mash quickly enough, you can actually start surfing to the other side without this trainer uh, triggering you. However, you are required on all of those categories to fight her, um, and we generally want you to do it without going to the other side because that's technically slightly faster, even if you fight her. Because you can just talk to her from the water. Another fun fact is that if you talk to her from the water, the background in this fight is the water background and not this one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so far, pretty good run to be honest. We're not that far behind PB. Um... We didn't really have that many unfortunate incidents, I guess. It's very hard to do a full run without a single death. Yeah, definitely. And especially like on such a, a long run, like no one would bother to grind this, I think. So we just kind of have to like accept that we're gonna die. So we basically save for every major fight, just like so. Every run of this is usually like sort of like marathon like. As opposed to any percent where I would, I wouldn't really save anywhere, and I would just keep going. And if I die, then reset. All right, last fight with Cadabra. We're done with Cadabra. Any percent would actually use Cadabra a little more, but since we are switching to Dialga, and since we are teaching Thunderbolts to Dialga um, anyway. Um, we're just gonna use Dialga now and get rid of Cadaver immediately. Whoops, that's the wrong. Okay, we do want to remove this item and deposit the Cadaver. And now, teach T Bolt. Gonna teach it over slash. Then we teach Dragon Pulse, which we just picked up, if you noticed it. Teach it over Roar of Time. And yeah, now we should be good to go with Dialga. Uh, one thing to note, I don't know if you noticed it. Um, whoops. Um, you can actually teach... I, uh, you can teach um, DMs, you can also heal Pokemon using the Give Item menu. It's a pretty like nice optimization to do things. We are gonna act special. Acid Armor is fine. Now we just keep old. What item are you using? Uh, right now we have a metronome on this Dialga. We will be switching to... Choice specs every now and then, uh, but basically we're going to switch around between those two. Okay, where's Quakus? Good thing this guy has a golem. That would be hard to find on the... On the national decks. On the, yeah. On the regional decks. A lot of the 
that's the thing, like, a lot of the, like, the really rare Pokemon, like, Empoleon is another one. Yeah. Um, a lot of this Pokemon, are just, like, this victory roll is really buff. There's, like, a lot of this Pokemon. Uh, there's, like, I think there's also a Torterra uh, somewhere. There's a lot of very big Pokemon here. And since the victory roll is just so involved, you have to hide so many. Yeah, it just it works out from the deck, deck's perspective. Yeah, right. So Dialga doesn't have the, the greatest typing, at least compared to Palkia, for example. Palkia's water type, water type is very good. Um, and Palkia has Surf as well. Um, so it it's end up being a lot better uh, for especially this category. And only slightly better, I guess, for round one. For like any round. Um, Steel type is not just... it's not as useful. Um, But yeah, for round one in the end, it's roughly the same. Um, just slightly riskier and slightly slower on Dialga, especially because Dialga itself is also slower than Palkia. But for round two and round three, it's yeah, Palkia just has a much better time. There's a few fights that I really scuffed um, on round two and round three. Especially round two. And yeah, we're at the Pokemon League now. Uh, we won't do Elite Four right away because we still have to fight Barry. Oh, right. Uh, Barry's fight is usually kind of straightforward. Uh, there's usually not a lot that can go wrong. Um, I have to heal. Where it is there? It is. I am gonna save though. I mean, it depends on what you want to do in a normal play. Like metronome is a good item. It's actually not that hard to get either. It's in Veilstone, next to the the, the, giraffe, the, the giraffery. It is a pretty good item to have. Um, it's better than nothing, for sure. Um, Especially if you're just spamming moves. Yeah. Post-combat turn 1 is actually kind of weird. It doesn't usually go for that. It's usually Rain Dance immediately. We're gonna heal now. Uh, this is a marathon save. Uh, because if you get crit here, uh, we would die. But if you get crit from full, we shouldn't die. Yeah. And now it's out of close combats as well. Because Dialga's ability is pressure. Basically, halves the. It halves the the PP of the moves used by the opposing Pokémon. So in this case, close combat would be 5 PP. Um, it only has 3 in this case. Good luck getting Shiny Dialga. My god. <laughs> I've never seen one actually um, in a run. Imagine. You have to go through all those guys and cuts. Imagine. You I would go for it. it.
Okay, but it's that's... pretty much free at this point. Yeah, it is pretty much free at this point. Uh, you can get Quick Cloud on Rainbow Leon. Yeah. But you should be fine. It's actually interesting because this Terraptor is the one with the, the Quick Claw earlier. But Barry actually changed it, and now this Terraptor has a Focus Sash. And the Quick Claw is now on Impolion. Alright. Done with Barry. Now we just fight the E4 at one time and the game is over. Yep. Nothing, nothing else after that. <laughs> Ignore the stream title. <laughs> we could just fight round one three times. <laughs> I think it's technically possible. Can you do that? Can you pick what like, uh, round you it can't is? pick, but if you don't have the um... the national or the yeah, finish? if you don't, I assume uh, you can just fight the elite four again. Actually, yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, you should be able to pick, right? I think it would make for a more interesting thing if you could pick. Yes, that is exactly it. So we do Shame Char. We do use Machop for like a couple of fights as well. And then it's Kadabra for a good while, and then Dialga until the end. Or Palkia if you're on Shining Pearl. Whoops. Okay. Alright, this fight is pretty much free. Uh, I did save just because reasons, but yeah. <laughs> it is pretty safe. Uh, it's very hard to die in this fight, especially with this strat. Uh, the strat you normally use on any percent is a strat that if you are not paying attention, you could die to. Or if you get unlucky and crit um, the dust off. But with this strat, it's pretty much fine. You basically don't want light screen for Vespican. And we're not gonna have light screen by the time we get there. about the Z4 is that they really stressed me out. The next fight is the worst fight for any percent uh, E4. It's Bertha. Yeah, on round 2 and round 3 it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, that's not surprising. But it's not the worst. The worst one is Flint on round 2. By far, it is by far the worst fight in the game. He goes back for revenge. It's so bad. It's actually so bad. I'm not, I'm not even sure. So here's the thing. I haven't done the fight enough to even know if it's actually like consistent enough to actually go for. But yeah, it's just so bad. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I have a backup save in case something horrible happens. Um. Where is there it is. I basically have so the last time I did a marathon run of this was like a year and a half ago or something. And I still have all my backup saves from that. <laughs> so I can just use them if yeah, might I as need well to. Keep them. I basically created three backup saves, one on one after Wake basically. One after Cyrus 2. And one after Flint too, basically. Oh God, that's so much time for backup saves. Yeah, it was. I was actually playing it's the like game. Like nine back hours for backup. Yeah, saves. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, that should be fine. Uh, if you have really bad HP and defense, you can just straight up get three shot here. Ah, uh, it should be fine. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, the problem with this fight is not exactly that, it's just that if you get crit, you die. Um, and you give you give Bertha like 
five chances to crit you or something. It's not great. So. And we're still not out of the woods because we still have a golem to go through that has sturdy. Which means it's gonna land a first click on us. Gonna go for it now. What? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? She can't do that. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what? I have never seen this. Oh my I god. I have heard dude. about it. I have never seen it. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> well, there you have it. I didn't have to dodge a, a hurt quick quick. No That's actually. Nope. It's not optimal because the width, like the withdraw takes time, but. It is fine. Um, it's also fine from like a metronome perspective, apparently. We didn't waste any PP, so it's, in the so end it's funny. fine. That's crazy, dude. Why did it withdraw? <laughs> Why? The world may never know. What's funny is that it used rock polish. It uses rock polish, it's faster, and now- Okay, now I will draw. That'll show him. Now that I am faster. <laughs> faster. Alright. Now we got flint. Um... We do have to XP twice, unfortunately. It's not the end of the world, but yeah. The fight is usually fine, it's the main thing is... Um, the Infernape, which is the last Pokémon, has a Focus Sash. Which means it's gonna land a close combat on us. So if you get crit there, then you're pretty much dead. Um, gonna kill just to be a little more safe. I could get... Okay, it's fine. Uh, okay. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, we just have to wait until it wakes up. Any day now. <laughs> there we go. Alright. So now we just basically have to dodge a crit um, on Infernape. And we should be good. Favorite fire type Steelix. <laughs> is is low punny a fire type? No. <laughs> We've been through this. It's only Rapid Dash and Inferno. Those are the only. Driftloon the has only is fire, isn't it? No. Wait. It's Ghost. Yeah, I thought it was both. No. I don't remember if it's a dual type. I know it's ghost, I don't know what the other type is. Oh, it's, 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 it's flying and ghost. Flying, okay, yeah. Alright, time to dodge the close combat crit or whatever. Okay. I've actually never been crit by this, I think. Um... <laughs> it 
dealers trying to Pokemon facts. <laughs> so true. Is mayonnaise an instrument? All right. That's Flint. I'm gonna equip the metronome here. You technically can do this fight with choice specs if you have good enough special attack. Uh, I'm gonna buff that. Uh, however, I'm gonna need the metronome anyway afterwards. Um, not for Cynthia, but for round two. So it just makes sense to do it right away. After Lucian, Lucian is fairly okay. On Dialga, it's much worse on Palkia. There are actually a couple ways you can do this. Um, there is a strat where you use an XP an XPDF instead of an XSpeed. Okay, gonna be just a little bit safer. Which one did it use? Did it use Reflect or Light Screen? I don't... it doesn't use... it didn't use both yet. Oh, I do not know. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this fight specifically. It's just I'm wondering because it usually likes to use both of them uh, towards the beginning. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can do this actually in two different ways. You can either X-Speed once and x -Pedef, in which case you're going to be outsped by the... Alakazam, but Alakazam doesn't really do much anyway, so that fight also works. The other is to just do what I did, which is X speed twice instead, and then you outspeed the Alakazam. Yeah, light screen, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Approaching Cynthia. Cynthia is actually not gonna be completely free on this one because I have to XP twice. Uh, but it is fairly free. I'm still gonna save. Is Cynthia free in any percent? It is it should be free um, if you only have to XP once. It should oh, okay. always be free pretty much on Shining Pearl. And if you have decent enough speed, it should be free on Berlin Diamond. I don't have good enough speed, so I have to XP twice, which means I have to tank something. Um, the problem, so the, the main thing is you have to set up... Um, first you XP death, and you're gonna, ha you're gonna get a hit with something, but after you XP death, usually Cynthia is gonna... Um, It's gonna start sucker punching because since you have better spadef, it's gonna try and go for its only physical move, which is sucker punch. And then since you're right. doing setup, um, it's basically gonna fail every time. It only has three sucker punches because of pressure. But if you have good speed, you only need to set up three X items, which are an X speed and two X specials. So usually you're gonna be done with setup uh, without taking a hit, basically besides the very first one. Which is why we basically consider this to be mostly free. Yeah. So now, in theory, it should stop. Yeah. There we go. But yeah, unfortunately, I will have to do two X speeds here. Which means now we're just gonna go for something else. Um, I should still be fine. Yeah. 
I don't think even a crit would kill them. So yeah. And yeah, on Palkia this is not really a problem because Palkia is always gonna be... It's always gonna have no speed to only need uh, a single XP rather than two. But yeah, that's gonna be round one pretty much. GG's. It's over. Easy peasy. Let's go to T-Pat's run now. Oh wait. <laughs> There's probably like an hour to go still. Maybe a bit more. Depending on how my luck goes. <laughs> it's like in Sword Shield when you're about to do the last fight and... <laughs> yeah, it's JK, just like... Let's go on a side imagine. for the next hour. <laughs> Literally, literally the difference the is about the difference is out. <laughs> the ending of this is actually kind of fun. As opposed to switch late game, it just sucks. <laughs> it's just there to fill the time. We can basically, so we have to reset the game as soon as we hit the save, basically. So we're actually not going to see the entire Hall of Fame. Oh, no credits for this? Sad. We can watch the credits at the end, maybe. If, if I'm <laughs> in a Sit through the credits me. each time you beat the E4. I mean, we're not going to watch the whole thing, though. <laughs> it's too long. It's like six minutes of credits. I like that the little statues on the sides are like the same statues as they've always been through all the games. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what Pokemon is that supposed to be? <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's it's a small Dragonite, I don't know. Could be Dragonite. Or a Charizard, I don't know. Okay, uh, could have done this earlier. All right. So as soon as it saves, you can just stop reset and then you're in 20th town, basically. So yeah, we have done round one. Now we have to do round two. I will repel this time. Yeah, now comes the fun part, to be honest, uh, because this is... From now on, it's like unknown territory if you've never seen. It only took us four hours to get here. <laughs> it only took us four hours to get here. <laughs> to the fun part. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with this category. Because, like, I don't know, it's it's nice to do the, the little, like, detours. I think it's a nice thing to do every now and then. It's just not really something to do a lot. Because at some point, it's just going to feel like any percent again. Because for the most part, it's still very much any percent. <laughs> so this is Mesprit. We actually don't fight this. Uh, this is like a roamer. Uh, it goes around Sinnoh. Sort of like the um, like Raikou and Entei and Suikin. But we don't actually. So by looking at here, by looking at Mesprit here, uh, we get the, the entry on the Pokedex, even though we didn't actually see the sprite. But... It just kind of works like that. Oops. Okay. Now we got to snow point. And we have to go to Lake Acuity. As you may remember, we did we already did Azelf. Um where like while we were while we were on the way to to Volkner's gym, like after Dialga. Um, but for these two, um, you only unlock them, basically by the time you unlock um, both of these, uh, you just basically have to fly back for them, and at that point it just 
Might as well do it now, uh, rather than earlier. You can get outsped by this, you can basically fail to escape this Uxie if you don't have good speed on Dialga. So it could happen here. Actually, not sure. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Easy fight. <laughs> Alright, one last Pokemon we're missing. Just Palkia, actually. So, this is a really fun thing that they did uh, in these games. It's also in the original. Um, that they actually allow you to see every Pokemon. Um, which is why, like, April Run 2 and 3 are even a thing the way they are. They allow you to see Palkia here by talking to the elderly here. Oh, that counts? Yeah, and that gives you the entry on a Pokedex. And that should be it. We should have 150. It's time to actually figure out if we do. It's like a Kogus Gym moment. Could you have gotten that when you were here before, or does it, does it make you wait? Yeah, you can only get it after you get Dialga, I believe. Okay. We've seen 150, let's go. If you miss something, it's a little awkward, because then you have to like figure out which, which one you missed. Um, I've only done that once, and it was the, the Wormadam, I think. From... Professor Oak is here? Yeah, Professor Oak is here. That's why you oh have the National Oh my god, that's crazy. Did you never play this casually? No, I never did I never did late game or post game stuff. This I mean I played it fun. casually but not not past the I don't know. I don't know if I would recommend speedrunning them anymore, but Oh yeah, now there's work here. Not work. Um Yeah, work. It is work. Okay, already have the metronome, so I'm just gonna fly to the Pokemon League. And yeah, right now we have the National Axe, which means we have unlocked Round 2. So now we can just go there. Round 2 is interesting as well because the teams are not only stronger, they are also different. Uh, there's a few extra Pokemon there. Um, gonna buy more Axe. Like, I really shouldn't need this, but you never know. 48 full restores, surely that's enough. That's gotta be enough. It's mostly because there are a few fights that are extremely scuffed, so you kinda just want to have the absolute most. I think there was one time where I didn't do it, and I nearly ran out of full resource, even though I bought like 41. Yeah. Do they give different uh, dialogue too? I have no idea. I don't remember that, <laughs> that much. <laughs> Alright, so here's a Yan Mega. That's a new Pokemon. This is another one like from this from the National Dex. Um so this is like probably the main reason why it is hidden behind the National Dex, just so they could have the Pokemon here. Um I'm gonna XP twice. I'm not actually sure what the IV is for me. I don't remember much of this, to be honest. I routed this way too long ago, but that's okay. Um, yeah, this fight is not as free as... It's not really free, to be honest. Um, it is fairly straightforward. Um, but it is not as simple as round one, for sure. And yeah, I am going to heal here because I'm guessing it's going to go for the tech. Whoops. That would have been... bad. Okay, it did not go. It's going to go now. <laughs> I just know it. Yep. That's fine. It does outspeed because of the, um, the ability, uh, but that's fine. Basically, just need to get to plus six, and then we can one shot everything. Heracross is still here. Um, they do still have just five Pokemon on round two. On round three, they'll have six Pokemon. There's a Caesar, also another oh, pretty nice, nice Pokemon. Um, has Bullet Punch oh 
priority move, so you kind of want to watch out to not have um, too low Maybe HP. I'll load up my casual post-game stuff in this. <laughs> <laughs> you should. The post-game stuff is like pretty good. I like it. Like there's a full island for it. Right. Yeah, I know about the island. Yeah. I never bothered. Yeah, Albi is like. I think this is the only game that has a round three. I think all the others just have round two. I don't think even do a regional sad round three. Even though it's like, this is a faithful remake for the most part. Oops. All right, time for Bertha. If you thought Bertha was scuffed the first time. We ain't seen nothing yet. Um, Guild of Pool. We basically have to kind of stall the earthquakes here. We basically have to tank five earthquakes um, while we do the entire setup. Oh no. And it's not great. If one of them crits, you're dead. But it's kind of similar to Rotom like, 1. In that sense. It's just that it's gonna do a lot more damage. So much so that I'll do 2x defense actually. <laughs> Are you scared yet? A little bit. <laughs> Yeah, this sucks. This is why you kind of want like the absolute most full resource, because if you mess something up, then you can get in a really sticky situation. Okay, I'm not as scared as I was now. Uh, it can still crit. <laughs> and I still want to be like pretty safe with it. Um, I'm gonna heal here just in case. It's also like, it's gonna run out of earthquakes anyway soon, because it's under pressure. I don't know what my special attack is, I actually haven't been keeping track of it. Uh, so I'm just gonna do three special attacks rather than two. Uh, you can do just two if you have good enough special attack. But I don't know. But yeah, as you can see, it's not too consequential. Um, it still has a few moves that can be annoying. I still want to heal here because it still has the golem. So we still have to tank one more earthquake from the golem, just like we should have in round one, right? Or super earn. Burn is annoying, you have to heal again. Okay, 10 head is fine. And now we just Dragon Pulse. So yeah, now really the only thing that can go wrong is Golem quitting Earthquake. Hopefully the Golem doesn't withdraw again. <laughs> that was really scuffed. I actually don't even know if withdrawing here uh, would actually work because I think both the Paladin and the Right Peter kind of need the, okay, the. Actually, no, never mind, because we're not we're not getting Metronome anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, we're good. So it would have been fine, even if it wasn't. Ooh, JT Magic Man, let's go. Shout out to the canonical JT. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be. Oh, G JT. <laughs> the JT down under. I'll just I'll just be let's go JT. Yes. I'll just be JT who loves this game. Alright, so we're done with Bertha, and now comes the worst fight in the entire run. Which is Flint. It is absolutely horrible. I cannot stress this enough. Because it leads a Houndoom. And the Houndoom is really, really oh dangerous. God, um, we basically have to try and get rid of the Houndoom as soon as possible and then do the rest of the setup on the Infernape. Um, I 
Problem is, getting rid of the Helm is not easy. Like, it's not that uncommon to have to reset a couple of times. Because it has Nasty Plot as well. You have to basically use ex an Expedef. Then if it Nasty Plots, you have to Expedef again. If it Nasty Plots three times, you're basically done. Um, you do have to X Speed and you have to X Defend at least once. Because you still need to tank uh, one post combat on Infernape to do the setup. Um, so yeah, it just sucks. Um, and you'll notice it's gonna do a lot of damage with Flamethrower, for example. Uh, that's actually not too bad. Let's say plot. Immediately go for Expedef again. Immediately go for Expedef again. I cannot go any higher. That's scary. Don't go for Nasty Plot again, just keep playing Thrower in, please. Okay, just crit. That's oh, nice. Geez. <laughs> That's not the way I thought it would go. Dude, this, this is crazy. <laughs> of all the ways to lose that fight, <laughs> just a random crit doesn't really... <laughs> That's alright. The fight wasn't going that well. Anyway, because we already had two nice tip plots. But yeah, you want to basically get rid of it as soon as possible. Um, and then on the Inferno, you should be fine, you just have to dodge the crits basically from close combat. And then you should be good. Yeah, this fight is much better. Again, like, Shining Pearl is just much better. Like, Valky is just a much better type for this Elite Four. And not just Elite Four, like even something like Heatran, for example. <laughs> okay, can literally just use Third and that's it. <laughs> we have to cook a little more on our side. That's unfortunate. This thing also has Destiny Bond, by the way. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we have to watch out for that. Um, Flame through here. It's fine. Uh, no, not this. It's an extra pen now. Okay. Another thing that kind of sucks is that we actually have to two shot this thing. Okay, as long as you don't get crit, you should be fine here. We have Metronome, which is why this kills, uh... And yeah, now... It is still not done. We have to heal this because we are in Mach Punch range. range. Okay. Still have to dodge a bunch of close combats here. Okay, gonna heal again. One more X defend. This is gonna be the last close combat. Okay, we're good. Still have to heal. Uh, at this point, unless we get crit, it shouldn't really do much damage to us with any of the other moves. It has a bunch of fire, like a fi bunch of punches. It has fire punch, has uh, thunder punch, I believe. Um, and yeah, now we just have to do the rest of the, the setup, which is basically three X specials. And then an X speed as well. This okay, is so or just crazy. <laughs> oh no, dude! Got crit again. That's crazy. No way. Okay. And this is only round two. Yeah, yeah, but this is like surprisingly on round three is much easier because on round three it doesn't leave the Houndum. It leaves the Nine Tails. Yeah. It's a much better poke to be Jeez, up against. This is out for blood right now. Yeah, getting crit twice is. Very unfortunate. And the worst part is, it's not even like... That's not how this fight usually goes wrong. That's the problem. The way this fight usually goes wrong is that I just get, I don't know, Nasty Plot into Oblivion, or... <laughs> or 
or just get really like bad rolls. Um, because depending on your stats, you can also just literally get two shot by the Houndoom. Um, you kind of need to bank on not getting like extremely bad rolls or extremely good rolls on your part. Surely third time is the charm. Flamethrower, please. No. Okay. I already XP'd, right? Yeah. It could kill from here. If we got burned there, <laughs> the hell would have been spicy. Okay, no burn here. Don't burn here either. Nasty pot would be fine here. Okay. Oh my God. We're fine. <laughs> We're fine for now. Wow. We now we just have to dodge the crits again on Infernape. Um. I actually, what I should have done is I should have played it a little safer earlier on the Infernape when I got. Uh, hold on. When I got through the close combat, when I got burned, I should have pursued that. Because um, I'm pretty sure a kill from the Fire Punch wouldn't kill. Um, a crit from the, from the Fire Punch, that is. Okay. One more. Just don't crit here, please. Okay. Should be Mach Punk range as well. Any day now. Okay. Attack special. That's the best one you could. Hope for. Uh, paralysis is fine. Much better than... than burn. There's so much setup on this fight. Yep. That's Dialga for you. <laughs> okay. Now we heal. Hope we don't get, you know, paralyzed again or something like that. Or Burn, and then we go. Oh, there's one more thing. This thing still has a focus sash. But we still have to stack one more thing. Don't burn. Good. Okay. Now it should be through. Jesus Christ. I'm surprised I died twice. Just from, like, normal crits. And not really anything related to the... Just the nature of the really bad fight. Yes, there is a significant time difference. Uh, one of the main reasons is this fight, to be honest. But in general, there is a significant time difference. Palki is just a better mon for both round 2 and round 3, and even round 1. Uh, granted, it's not that big of a difference, but yeah. Alright, we can breathe. There's still like nice, bad fights, geez. obviously, until the end, but it's not. Like, this is the last big hurdle, I would say, of the run, in general. Uh, because it is win first. Um, everything else from here is just a normal kind of bad fight, but for the most part, you're, you're gonna be fine. Lucian is an interesting fight, uh, it's kind of similar to what we do in a lot of other runs. We have to basically time the light screen, um, so that when it wears off, um, 
So basically that it wears off after that. We can't really have light screen later. The reason for this is that, so if you'll remember in round one, Bronzong, uh, which is one of the worst, like the, the worst threat here. Um, Bronzong was uh, the ace for Lucian. In this one, it's not, which means it's actually the second Pokemon to come out, um, which makes things really awkward uh, because you need uh, to basically. I'm gonna heal that. It basically means we have to build the metronome um, in a way that we're gonna basically two shot the the mime to build the metronome. So we can't really. Okay, that's a good. Um, getting a lot of crits today. This is stressing me out. This fight is still fine. Like it got crit, it, it got a crit, but it still didn't kill me. Right, so I'm fine. Okay, it is out of Dazzling Gleams as well now. And yeah, light screen is gonna wear off right after this. There it is, and I'm just gonna kill it. This metronome, this just dies now. And now I have enough of a metronome to be able to kill the Bronton. In addition to plus 6. I would just sweep with T-Bolt. T-Bolt is very handy for Dialga on round 2 and round 3. You don't really need it for round 1, so any percent doesn't really use it. Um, but for a lot of these fights it's kinda handy. Solution. And now we have Cynthia again. So Cynthia is not nearly as free. Uh, it's not free at all, it's just a normal fight now. We can still kind of manipulate the... Like the Sucker Punch thing. Not nearly as much because Cynthia actually has um, Will O Wisp now. So it will use Will O Wisp every now and then instead of Sucker Punch uh, while we're setting up. But also, we have to do a lot more setup. So it's gonna start using some of, uh, some of the special moves eventually. There's a will o wisp Shouldn't be too consequential. Uh, it's just annoying, more than anything. It should be spamming Sucker Punch now because it already will o wisp Okay, now it's out of Sucker Punches. I need to do two more like, specials. I'm gonna be extra safe, and I'm gonna go back. That's annoying, but that's okay, just heal now. And yeah, that should be Cynthia now. One thing to note is that on this fight now, uh, we are using different moves. On round one, we basically just Dragon Pulse the, all the way through. On this one, we can't really do it. Uh, it has different pokes. The Togekiss is new, I believe. Um, yeah, it's definitely new. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's the only new Pokemon, I think. And then... 
it will change one more Pokemon on round three. Uh, I think the Roserade comes out um, on round three. And Porygon Z is actually going to make an appearance. Pretty nice. Done with round two. So for round three, we actually can't do it yet. Um, one of the requirements is obviously beating round two. Um, the other is you have to defeat or catch Heatran. Um, we will not be catching it because we already used a Master Ball on Dialga, and it would be miserable to try and catch Heatran at this point. So we're just gonna kill it. Um, that's another difference between like Shining Pearl and another fight that's like quite different uh, between the two versions because Palka can literally just use Surf when it's done. Uh, Dialga has a little mo a bit more trouble with Heatran. Heatran's stats are random. Um, and one interesting thing about Heatran is that it can technically outspeed the Dialga depending on its speed and depending on your speed. And it can also two-shot Dialga uh, with one of the moves. I forget which one it was, um, but it can two-shot us. And we unfortunately cannot uh, one-shot it. Which means we're actually going to be using uh, a move that we bought earlier, which is Bulldoze. Um, Bulldoze is a pretty safe two-shot for, for Heatran. You could also use something like Earthquake or whatever, but Bulldoze will drop the Heatran speed. And this will guarantee that you are faster um, than Heatran on the second turn, which means you basically get a pretty safe fight. Uh, one thing to note, I did not self-reset here because you can skip the credits uh, once you have done it once. So you can just do this and immediately go here. That's a nice uh, nice addition. Yeah, I forgot to fix this. Whoops, okay. There we go. So now we go to post game. Yeah, just get an another basketball. I wonder where you can get another Master Ball in this game. There's probably ways to do it. But yeah, this game has an entire like new area once you've beaten it. And like I mentioned before, if you don't have the National Dex when you go here, it's actually going to be blocked. Like above there, going to Route 225, uh, it's blocked by some people because they don't want to, to see the National Dex folks until you have the National Dex. So yeah, now we're gonna go up. Shoutouts to one of the best songs in the game, which is the one on this route. You have to fight one of these optionals. Uh, this one on the right has a slow poke and a slow growth, so we just do this one. The only way to proceed here. Uh, the one on like the corner is a spinner, so we can just skip that one. Another spinner. <laughs> Any day now. There we go. 
Uh, we do have to watch out for this movement here. Uh, there are a few trainers that you want to dodge, so... They're not necessarily like... Spinners like the ones we usually face. But just trainers you kind of have to watch out for. Like this one. What okay. a weird movement pattern. Okay. This one doesn't look to the right. Oops. This one does not look up. And... Oh my god. This one does not look down, it looks scary there, but it's fine. Um, another spinner here. Okay. No! Oh, I was no. pressing the thing, it just didn't work. It didn't trigger the... I could have been safer about that though. Um, but yeah. I was pressing the thing. Well, it wouldn't be a BDSP run without a... Without an optional, yes. Is that the first optional I hit? Probably. I think so. That's pretty interesting. Zazu, okay. I haven't seen Zazu since Crystal either. <laughs> yeah, they just forgot about these books. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's in Scarvi now. I believe I... Maybe in the Probably DLC is. though. I feel like Scarvi has everything. I don't remember if she looks up. I don't think so. Not today. Yeah, we're going to Stark Mountain. Basically, I have to investigate the thing there. Um, Another one tall gap that is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Alright, here's Wake for some reason. I have no idea why Wake is here. <laughs> this is Barry's father. Yeah, he's Barry's father. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot, to be honest. <laughs> Alright, here's Buck again. One more optional here that we have to dodge. The unfortunate thing about this run is that this like this part is kind of cool, but unfortunately they force you to do it twice. Hey, remember that one time we push a boulder into oblivion in Let's Go? <laughs> yeah. BDSP version of that. It's not as bad. Whoa, you can push down the stairs? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty it's weird. Crazy. <laughs> you do need to watch out to not mess up the puzzle here, because otherwise you'd have to reset it. It is faster to do uh, strength on outside the bike. Barry is there. You can actually fight Barry um, again. I think you can fight him there actually, and you can also fight him in oh, okay. like in the first area. Uh, An optional Barry fight. Um, you can fight him basically like near the battle tower, and he has like a bit of a stronger team. I think it's still the same pokes, just higher level. And maybe like better like stats and IVs, I don't know. We can't use the bike now because we have Buck here. Okay, I'm gonna save here, just in case. You know this fight as a double? Because usually it's okay, but it can go wrong if you do it as a double. 
Doing it as singles would be safer. But usually Buck helps out a bit. Buck has a, a clay doll. The main problem here is the Machamp. Um, well, they're all problems, but like we try to get rid of the left side first. Because they're all problems. But the Machamp can be a little annoying uh, if it starts using Dynamic Punch. Which it did. So we have to heal now. Hopefully the clay doll will help here though, with another extra sensory. There we go. Nice. Yeah, should be good now. I would just have to just keep flashing enemy. Uh, this is just like any other, like, double fight expedition in the game. You get healed afterwards. Always try is the oh let's try and ditch buck. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> we couldn't. Damn it. Is it possible? It is possible to ditch buck, and it's actually <laughs> more common than you'd think. It happens a lot. I you uh, I shouldn't have talked about it to be honest. Because usually I don't say anything and it happens. Um yes, Buck could basically get stuck on like a ledge or something. And you can just do the entire thing by yourself. <laughs> Whoops. Right, we have to leave this room first and then we can escape rope. So yeah, unfortunately, we're gonna have to do this entire thing again. Um, <laughs> just not very well thought out, I think. But yeah, basically, we have to go. Oops. Go to survival area again. We have to talk to Buck again. Who is in? I think it's his house. I don't know. And now we go back. Did run into an optional already, so we can just not have to worry about that one, I guess. Yeah, another thing is you can... Yeah, there's like a bunch of... There's actually more to this post-game area. Um, this is basically only half of it. And it's unfortunate that we basically don't really go to the other part. We just stick to this part. There's like a desert area uh, to the right. There's a water area like at the bottom. Last spinner in the run. There we go. Easy. Alright. Now I just have to do the puzzle again. <laughs> I guess when you count the fact that you do this twice, it's almost as long as pushing the boulder and let's go. Whoop. Yeah, I guess so.
Uh, I forgot, yeah. We can't bike now, because we don't have bots. With Buck, basically the only path that you can take is this one. Um, you could technically go... Like, now I could technically go to Heatran's room using, like, Rock Climb. Um, on the right there. I believe. I th Yeah, I think that leads to Heatran's room. But you have to fight the, the other double fight, so it's not worth it. Even if you have to push this boulder. And I was talking about pushing boulders earlier. This is the, the equivalent to let go. <laughs> Yeah. Don't lose this. And you have to do it twice. Do you have to push A every time on it or do you just no, no, run into it? Yeah, you can you can get to okay, it from that's there. Nice. Uh okay. So we are gonna teach Bulldoze. those over ancient power. Uh we don't have to heal to full. We'll save just in case. And yeah, this is just we spam bubbles twice. I'm not sure if this E turn is gonna outspeed us or not, but if it does, it shouldn't on the second turn, so we just kill it. It's also it also has random AI, which means it may not even go for a move that's actually relevant. Yeah, Stone Edge not not gonna do much. But yeah, in any case we should outspeed now. And then we just kill. If you have extremely bad stats, you can technically uh, miss the. Oops. You can miss that. Uh, that's like a range, technically, still. Uh, where did I. And now. I forgot about this. That's okay. Uh, and I should heal. Oh man, is it time for round three now? Yep, it is time to do round three. Let's go! Now just to be even more safe, I'm just gonna buy even more full stars. <laughs> I really shouldn't need this, but it's like... 27 should be more than enough, but it's, yeah. You never know. Can ever be successful. Uh, I will save just in case. Shouldn't be much of a problem here. Yeah, this fight is very similar to round two. A lot of these are similar. Um, they're actually not as scary in round three sometimes. Also because I give fiber candies to Dialga just there. Let's see how this one is fairly similar. I guess the main difference will be Flint. Um, and thank god for that. Because Flint was not good. Guess, but that drop is interesting. Did I use two X speeds? I think I did. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I looked away at the wrong time. I didn't. I didn't see. Don't crit me. Should be it. Assuming I did everything on the setup, I kind of lost track of this. I think I used two expedefs as well, which is more than what 
you would normally do. Uh, but I did get a uh, Spadef proc. Um, but I should have X for X Spadefs. Um, just because there's a few fights where you can potentially use them if you get dropped. I do need to watch out to actually flash cannon the Drapion with his last poke. The fly gun is I think is new. I don't think it was in round two. And another thing to want to, to talk about is they have six Pokemon now, all of them. Um, so it's not just the Pokemon themselves, it's not just the levels. They all have six Pokemon now. And the levels really ramp up here. I just noticed this is level 79. Yep. <laughs> it's easy to get lost. I was looking at that. <laughs> it is pretty scuffed. Yeah, that's Aaron 3. Now on to Birth. The Birth is very similar. It's actually slightly better on round 3 because there is no Golem anymore. Um, so there is no sturdy problem. She gonna draw this time. Yeah, I can't even withdraw it then anymore. Uh, I will max E30 Dragon Balls. I actually didn't need it, but okay, whatever. You only need it if you get detected. I wasn't sure if I got it. Um, but that's okay. So yeah, this is pretty much the same strat we're gonna X defend twice and then do the setup and try not to get crit basically by Earthquake. Then once it's out of Earthquakes, it's usually fine uh, because the other moves don't do as much. Um, yeah. I am gonna be safe here. But I could maybe live that one. Okay. One more earthquake. Okay. I will build this. Because even though it doesn't have earthquakes, the other moves, I mean, they're not as strong, but they can still do a decent amount of damage. Not Zen Edward for sure. Uh, that's actually what we want to see. Uh, Skull is annoying. Why does it always burn, dude? Oh no. I've been burned so many times today. Don't freeze me. Okay. We're fine. I actually didn't even need to, because for this, like, since there's no golem, you don't even need to be full health. Um, there is a mammal swine here which has high char ice shard, but it doesn't do that much, so as long as you're okay L, you don't really need to be full. Dragon pulls everything except the Rhyperior. Since they have six Pokemon, the PP management is a little more awkward. That's why you'll see me a lot of the times also just use a random move that is different rather than just having the same one. Nido Key! Hey! Only right here or left, and then we're going Flint again. Flint is much easier um, than it used to be. Around two, it was awful because of Aldum. Aldum is still in the party, uh, but it is not uh, the lead. The lead is Ninetales now. And Ninetales also has Nasty Plot, actually. Um, but it's not like nearly as dangerous. Um, 
Another thing that it has, it has, it has route, which means we're gonna get um, sun, which will make it oh, slightly more scary, but it's still not nearly as scary as as Adam, and it will run out eventually. And when it runs out, then it gets much easier as well. So yeah. We do have a big setup anyway. But at least we don't have to set up on the Inferno this time. We're now getting Friendship as well, which is worth noting. Uh, you'll notice we didn't really get Friendship on any of our boats so far because I've been trying, for the most part, to use the herbs that we got earlier on Kadabra. Uh, since we are doing so many fights um, with Dialga, at some point you're gonna get friendship. Uh, there's not really much uh, you can do about it. That's my second X speed, right? Yeah. Uh, should be, yeah. Uh... Oh yeah, to X defend as well. Ninetales also has hypnosis, which is like to use, um, which is nice. Okay, that's a great interesting. No way. I'm getting crit so so often these days, like this run. This is so. That's insane. crazy. <laughs> it's all right. It's interesting because, um, yeah, I've just been getting like plain crits, uh, which in a lot of these fights is not really the way I'm worried about, uh, or the thing I'm worried about. Um, obviously, they're always worried about crits, but the bigger problem with some of these fights is that they're just scuffed anyway, like Flint was. Um, but yeah, Flint has crit me. Three times already today. <laughs> it's alright, we'll be fine now. Oops. Okay. <laughs> As soon as drought is over, um, it should get a lot better as well. Uh, burn is oh, a little no. annoying. I'm actually gonna heal that, just in case it does a really good roll and I get... And I die from burn. Gnosis is good, especially if you can avoid it, because uh, then it tries again, eventually. Now we're done with sunlight. As you can see now it's gonna do a lot less with flamethrower. Oh, yeah, much better. Okay, hypnosis. One more X defend. You can technically go at plus plus four only. Uh, but the infernic ranges are a little sketchy at plus four, so. Might as well do plus six just to be a little safer. Oh, and Astro is a little annoying. Okay, okay, dude, can you stop burning me today? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> this is why we have so many. For resource. <laughs> oh, this is such a long setup to you. Solar beam. Okay, that is very interesting. But yeah, we're done with setup. Wow, that was. <laughs> that takes so long. Yeah, it takes so long. 
Probably it's just not a very good pull for this. But you can do it. You'll have to... Okay, we're good. Could've still... Crit there, if you want. It always has a focus set, this Infernip. I mean, yeah, now I just sweep everything. Um, Arcanine has extreme speed here, but yeah, as long as you're high health, you should be fine. There is no more Flareon here. Flareon was on round two, I guess it's over. It's no longer here, I don't know why. Rapid Dash is still here. And so is the Houndom. I think the new poke here is Ninetales. I don't think Ninetales was one of the pokes on round two. Yeah, Ninetales wasn't there before. Was Arcanine there before? Maybe not. Maybe it was just Flareon instead of... Yeah, uh, Arcanine, or... Arcanine wasn't there before either. Yeah. I can handle the timer, yes, if you want. <laughs> it was a little scuffed to start the timer for me. But to end it, it's much easier. Because I can just have the... I can just have the controller on auto fire. And I'm good. Alright, done with Flint. Time for Lucian. Lucian is very similar to... to round one, or round two, I mean. So you basically just stall out the light screen um, while you do your setup. And then you T-bolt twice to get the metronome boost and then kill the Bronzong, which comes out second again. Um, if you crit the mime and kill it, uh, you can you can die to the bronze one. But yeah, that's just the classic of this kind of fights. Last screen turn two. Um, did I use two XPs? I think I did, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. I think so. And now we full restore, and then we go for it twice. Whoops. One thing to note that um, this fight is under a light plate, or whatever it's called, um, which means the light screen is actually longer. It should still wear off here. Just needs to wear half in time for Bronzong, so even if it is turn 2, it should still be fine. Provided you don't crit. But then if you crit, you have a problem anyway, so not a big deal. And yeah, now we just table everything. And that should be Lucian. Sadly, no sub 5, but. It's totally fine for an arrow. made it through to the end, that's the most important Yeah, I got pretty I lucky on the E4. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really play it very well because I didn't really have time to de-rust this properly, but I think I got fairly unlucky with the crits in E4. The estimate was very, like, comfortable. It was also... The estimate assumed music on, because I wasn't sure at the time if I wanted to do music on or music off. Any BDSP run that makes it to the end is a is a good run. Yes. <laughs> well put. All right, time for Cynthia. Cynthia also has a pretty long setup, actually. Believe it or not, um, 
Because in addition to all the setup we were doing before, we also have to use we have to, we have to do some X defense as well now. Um I have one whatever. I hope this is fine. I have one more PP item than I think I should have. Maybe I just do two backups then. I don't know. That's fine. Um, but yeah, Cynthia. The problem with Cynthia on round three is that the Lucario has a focus stash now, and it has close combat and extreme speed. Which means we have to tank one. So we have to do um, X defense. We will still do them at the end though, just to basically get the um, like the sucker punch manip or whatever you want to call it. Still get Willow Wisp as usual, but it should be going for sucker punch now. Yeah. So yeah, out of X speeds now. What if you got power of love? God, you used 43x special attacks. <laughs> 53. But yeah, this is a little scarier though because since we still have three more turns of setup, it can. I just avoid, actually. Yeah, X defend twice. I mean, we have to heal anyway before we go, because we need to be re relatively high health for the Lucario. So this is totally fine. Now we heal. That's fine. Uh, flash Cannon. And now only one more thing can go wrong, I believe, which is the Lucario critting. Um, that should be it. As long as he doesn't crit. Um, and I hit the correct moves, of course. Okay, we're good. Should be out of extreme speed range as well. And yeah, that should be it. There is a Porygon Z in here. It's gonna pop up every now and every minute now. Yeah, not the best by Alga because of the speed. It was a little unfortunate. Take a look at the level of the Pokémon. The Garfrump is the highest level. <laughs> it is the last Pokémon. It is level 88. Which I believe is the level of Red's Pikachu, right? Jeez. Yeah, Red's Pikachu is up there for sure. And yeah, that should be GG. Nice GG's on the run. Alright, should be sub 510, which is nice. That was... that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> that is a wild category. It is, but I think it's a pretty interesting one. Not one is, you would grind for, but... I think it's a nice thing to do, once at least. Same goes for Shining Pearl. But yeah, and the fights are, I guess, like, pretty different. Get owned, Iron. <laughs> Thank you for the GGs, everyone. Okay, I wanna like... Sorry. Um... 
Do you need to mash on the Hall of Fame? That is a question. Because I also don't want to do auto fire because that will skip the credits potentially. I'm just not gonna mash. Um... Actually, it doesn't matter. I can end hard split later. It's fine. It's not a PB anyway, so it's whatever. I did not skip the credits. Let's go. I haven't seen these credits in. These are very a good year credits. And a half. <laughs> but yeah, that should be it uh, for E for round three. I think it's a very fun run, run to do at least once, um, and it's nice to showcase. I think um, there are quite a few differences from any percent, even though you still do about a lot of any percent. Um, and I think the round 2 and round 3 fights are pretty interesting. Even if they're kind of scuffed, especially with Dialga, I think it is pretty interesting uh, to be able to do all of this uh, with Dialga. Especially Dialga being like so underleveled compared to the Pokémon. Like Garchomp was like, what, 88? And I think Dialga must have been, what, 76, 77, something like that. Um, so it is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, uh, that should be it, I guess, from us. If you are interested in this run, in this game, or um, or any of the Switch Pokemon games, feel free to join the Switch PSR Discord. Uh, a lot of cool people there. Um, and yeah, any of the games, people will be there to help you with them. And it's a pretty nice community, so you should definitely join us. And yeah, with that, thank you, JT, for joining me in commentary. I know it's a long run. <laughs> Thanks but, for asking me. It was, uh, it yeah. was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks, everyone. And up next, we have the last run of the marathon: Pokemon Legends Arceus, any percent by Thomas Patrick WX or TPAT as we know him, and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, a very nice way to close out the marathon and yeah you should definitely stick around for that and with that yeah thanks again for watching and we'll see you in a bit